Oh, you know what I love? Sports. I love sports. Sports, 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 sports. When it comes to Texas A&M. Where are you getting this information? Let me tell you. Welcome to Texas. I need to talk a little sports with you, Ags. David Nunez here with Texas Radio. Billy Lucci here on Texas Radio. Olin Buchanan. We will develop men. We will graduate players. And we will win championships on the field. The best way for us to win is to do it together. Do you realize everybody knows who you are right now? I think we're coming into this year with a new confidence. Schools are like, we're freaking Texas A&M, man. Like... That's about as pretty a throw-catch combo as there is. I saw the safety roll, the slot fade. I knew where I needed to put the ball. You had <laughs> no other option but one hand at that yeah, point. Yeah, right? man, 50-50 ball, I got to come down with You know, if I'm betting on anybody, it's the Aggies. Come on, guys, let's not be surprised. It's what they do. Texas A&M basketball. Whenever you think it's over. Not that we on this show thought it was over. I think we said it last week on this show. We expect for uh, Buzz to go in the pot and figure out the right ingredients because he usually does that. He always does it here at AM, like, you know. But this is what they do. Welcome to Tex Ags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, Rollo Insurance Studio, the Go Hour, presented by the Warehouse at CC Creations. This is Coffee Talk, presented by Tex Ags Coffee. Beat the hell out of morning by going to texags.com slash coffee. He's Olin Buchanan. He's our Heisman Trophy voter. He's also a basketball savant. I'm David Nuno, <laughs> yeah. and I'm your, uh, your host for the evening, or for the morning, I should say. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. It's good to be here. Good to get here unscathed on this icy morning. When you opened up that and you said, uh, you know, let's not be surprised. That's what they do. I thought, is he going to go with AM basketball or Dallas Cowboys football? <laughs> well, <laughs> or Houston Texans football. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, buddy. That was awful. But at least the Aggies were remarkable. What a game. What a performance. Um, they needed that. And, and I think they needed it the way so they did toughness. it. Yeah. Well, I think they needed it. I, you know, I could have done without the way they did it. But here's what I was so impressed with. Not only did they win, they played well, like, start to finish. They didn't have the long, extended scoring droughts. And the mental toughness they showed to get in the last couple of minutes, or really last minute of regulation, to get some questionable calls go against them. They got screwed, OB. Including one. And then, in overtime, a bad call against them. And yet, they... Probably two bad calls because uh-huh. I think there was a phantom foul on Wade Taylor that gave Kentucky three free yeah. throws. And you get all these bad calls go against you, and you still win, and you hold the number two highest scoring team in the country without a field goal in overtime. That was phenomenal. And I, and I know that A&M didn't score a bunch in the OT. They, they did with that. How often do you see a team that should win in regulation – Get hosed, and then in overtime, like they just they lose their composure. Right. They did not lose their composure. Here's the thing: we've said it from day one of the issues of this team. Wade Taylor needs Boots Radford to be Wade Taylor, and Boots Radford went to the hole, and he went to the hole. Boy, did he! And that opened up and the so entire did offense. Wade, right? Yeah. They, 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 and you know what? Um, you said that about about a team that doesn't win in regulation that should. And a lot of times, you know, they, if if a team like Kentucky can get it into overtime, mm-hmm. then they say, okay, they they establish their dominance. But and so when they when Wade Taylor and I'm sorry, <clears throat> Boots Radford was called for a foul with less than a minute to go. A phantom foul right in front of me. You know, I'm biased of course, but I got a text message from a media guy in Tuscaloosa, Alabama that I know. Okay. And he just says, they're belling out Kentucky. Aggies are getting screwed. So it, it wasn't just here. People are everywhere. And so when you get a bad break like that, which looked to me, I'm not one of these conspiracy theorists, but it sure did look to me like one official wanted to make sure the game kept going. Or wanted Kentucky to win. Well, well, and that, to do that, they had to keep the game going. Yeah. Uh, and it, and he calls this foul, and he's told Boots, 
You swiped at the guy. Well, you can swipe all day if you don't make contact. He, he didn't foul him. And, yet the, and, and so I was so impressed that the Aggies, with the bad breaks like that, come back in, in overtime and just establish their dominance over Kentucky. You know, we do this segment during football season called The Turning Point. And the play I'm about to bring up wasn't the turning point, but it felt like, all right, Kentucky, you may make your run, but here we are. The Solomon Washington block. Solomon was spectacular. Spectacular. Another guy that had missed a little bit of time. Yeah, two last two games, and people are always going to look at numbers and things like how many points he scored, and he made some, some key shots for him, but it wasn't just that. You know, It was just the block shot. It's just the, the dogged determination and the toughness that he brings to this team. He's not the only one. Wildens Levesque. Wildens Levesque, and I'll tell you somebody else um, – I wish I had all my notes written out. I should have. But uh, Anderson Garcia was huge again with, uh, with big plays, um, getting offensive rebounds there late. And just, you know, he had that big steal yep. that he turned into a dunk. I mean, so when you beat a team like Kentucky, yeah, you're going to have maybe a, a couple of players have a huge game. I think back to the very first one in the SEC when uh, Elston Turner just lit him up for – 41, I think it was. So, yeah, you know, somebody's going to have enormous gains, but you're going to see your whole team come up and somebody that plays is going to – everybody's going to make a big play at some point. This Get game – a big shot. Look, I'm not just saying this because they won, but this game felt different than Auburn. Because Auburn, they kept it close and they had their chances. To me, it felt like A&M was the better team in this game other than Kentucky had these guys that can <laughs> score no matter uh, – what's his name? Who Dillingham, who had that Dillingham. nine-point stretch, who – like – what was it three straight threes in a row? Well, like, yeah, uh, at two eleven, one thirty four, and one oh four. I just happened to have it here. Boom, right. boom, boom. They went that uh, superior talent, but I felt like A and M played their brand of basketball. And by the way, their brand of basketball doesn't mean scoring ninety seven points, right? But their offense kept up, and I think a lot of it is because of what we said right there. We just saw Boots Radford drive to the hole. When you drive to the hole, it opens up other things. It opened up Wade. Now, Wade took some shots that he, you know, like, I, he, he can making, take them. He, he was, was making, making his three-pointers. And he can. He was 6-12, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, props to the Aggies. Look, what does it mean moving forward, OB? Nothing yet, yeah. but hope is back. Yes. Yes. You know, they go to... Arkansas tomorrow night, where they don't have a history of being having a lot of success in Fayetteville, and, and they just got blown out. Yeah, but here's the deal. Uh, I don't know why I looked this up, but last year Kentucky got beat by uh, South Carolina, and South Carolina's next game, Arkansas. No, it was A and M, and they got just blown off the court. Okay. The point is, and I don't, you know, I I'm feeling really good about A and M, of course, but um. Teams can have a great night in the SEC because everybody's talented, but can you sustain it? And that's going to be the question on Texas A&M. I feel good that they can. Um, quite frankly, I think they're better than Arkansas. But, man, it's hard to win up in Fayetteville. What's but, the last time? Is this the only time A&M this season has played like that brand of basketball? They, they've had it for flashes against – and they've done it against inferior opponents. But when, no, I mean, I think – Iowa they, State, they, they got hot. Yeah. I thought they played a, a – a good game start to finish against Florida Atlantic. Okay. All right. But against good teams, that might be the only other one. Were they missing somebody in the Florida Atlantic game? Yeah, they missed two guys. Two guys, well, yeah. That's when uh, Boots Boots, and Henry Coleman. Yep. And so uh, Wade went crazy and some yep. other guys stepped up. Uh, and it wasn't quite enough. So now do you look at this SEC season like, all right, they're back in it. They got to take care of business these next few games because these are manageable games if you look at SEC standards. Well, they're, they're, they were never out of it because you know, early. you're going <laughs> yeah, to lose some games, but they dug a hole because you don't expect to lose TLSU, especially at home. Yeah. Right? Um, they, the loss at Auburn, though, tough to take. I mean, it's, it's, if you can use the word ex excusable, Auburn's a highly ranked team. You're on the road. It's supposed to be hard, uh, but they played better. They played so much better than they did against LSU. And then 
to come back and beat um, Kentucky like that, you say, okay, yeah, this is who we thought they are. Now, are you going to be that team the rest of the way? I'm not saying you're going to go out and Wade's going to hit six three-pointers every game, but is this the kind of effort and the, the kind brand. of determination and tenacity yep. that you're going to see from A&M the rest of the way? Let's play that game we do on Mondays. Three things we want to see revisited. I don't know if you remember yours, but I got mine down. Well, I wanted to uh, – I think they I was, were very similar ours. Yeah, I think I wanted to see. Uh, I think I wanted to see uh, just an A and M win. I wanted to see yeah. a Cowboys win. So yep. yeah, I didn't get that. And did, did I? I don't know what else I said. I got my three things, and some of these topics we'll get into throughout the show. First one I said: attacking the rim and not a moral victory, a victory of playing A and M brand of basketball. I think we got exactly that. I do too. The second one I got, I don't think we got this, but maybe we did. A name at Bama that potentially shakes up the SEC. I don't think it shakes up the SEC. I think they got the best possible candidate. Yeah. And then a Texans and a Cowboys win. I got got half half of of it. I got half of that. Yep, Texans played really well. The Cowboys, uh, they played like a Mike McCarthy coach team. Came out, looked like they were – prepared yep and like they thought they were going to win that all we have to do is go out there and uh did a lot of stupid things like they tend to do as a Mike McCarthy team does and they uh embarrassed themselves well we'll talk more about that here in a moment if you want to be be a part of the conversation you can do it multiple ways you can call us what do you think about that Aggie basketball victory how did you feel about it do you believe in this team moving forward how much more do you have to see you can do that multiple ways you can call us up on the Brian Foley Law hotline 979-693-1150 or you can text us there at 979-693-1150 let's go behind the glass and say hello to Nick Savage Nick good morning sir howdy good morning y'all what's up well, that Aggie basketball game, I, I'm with y'all, or I don't know if y'all were there, but I, I'm roped back in. I'm I'm back on the, you know, the big mo. I, I'm feeling a lot better. I just don't know if they can play that brand like y'all were saying. That just them scoring. I think it was Logan last week that said if Kentucky score, and I don't want to put Logan on the hot seat here, but I think he said if if Kentucky scores those 90 points, there's no way <laughs> and can hang with them. But they did. They they hang almost 100 on them and ended up winning. So, I mean, if they can play that style of basketball, if they can play their brand of basketball, I, I think uh, they've turned a corner. Hey, uh, behind you on your right shoulder is the newest uh, intern who joined us, Alex Fragoni, back yep. there. Alex's uncle is a very famous sports talk uh, personality in Houston, Dave Delati. So there you go. So another Italian around here. Dave Delati and Alex Fragoni. Yeah. He says he's not even Italian. Oh. Okay. Way to go. But he is. What's Alex? Alex Fregoni. Alex Fregoni. Yeah. Lucci. Billy Lucci. And there's some others. David Unio. Yeah, it's not Italian, though. Oh, sorry. Kay Nagley. I, I don't like know what Nick, that is. That's just, you know, East Texas. I like when Nick goes uh, off script. Off, yeah. Yeah. Can you do like a whole segment like that? Negative. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dunn. Thank you very much, Nick. Let's uh, right now check in at the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. We find Matthew Dawson. Matthew, good morning, buddy. Good morning. OB, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Can you name all six teams that have won less playoff games than the Cowboys in the last 25 see, years? See, this guy. See, the turn. <laughs> like, you know, day I, five, already coming at you. Browns. Yep. Yeah, th- there's one. And then... Uh, I'll tell you, my Texas. team's on there. My team's on there. Bears. Yeah. I haven't really thought about it. Um, I, Texans probably have won more than the Cowboys. Oh, they have. They have, yeah. They're, uh, well, as of, They're the champions of Texas. As of this weekend, yes, they have, uh, they won five. Cowboys won four. You know what? You know what? Here's here's two things. Number one, I'm, I really wasn't that upset about it. I mean, I was upset, but you kind of expected it. But right? I kind of well, I, I didn't. I, I never thought that they were going to go far, right? Okay. So it, the inevitable came early, right? Um, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe this will be enough to embarrass Jerry Jones to, you know, bring in a real coach. Um, and then the only good thing about getting older and having mortgage and bills and things like yeah. that is once you have to deal with that, the, the losses that used to eat at me for like weeks, I don't care. You know, once the game's over with, okay, now let me go pay this bill. You know, and right. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother you as much as it used to. So the things that eat at A&M you. A&M uh, 
losses still do though. Yeah, A and M losses still Cause, eat cause at that, me. Because that, because that, you know, is part of the job, right? I, I like. I still love my professional teams in Houston, right? I still love the Astros and Astros. You know, when they lost to the Rangers, it hurt, but I was actually happy for my Ranger fans. Texans, it's nice to see them up and going. Rockets, I haven't really had an emotional feeling in a while for them. Uh, you know, my soccer team just won a, a big tournament mm. this weekend. I'm sure you were watching on ABC when Real Madrid destroyed Barcelona. I'm no, sure you were watching. I, 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 yeah, I had no idea. You know, I don't watch European kickball. You don't? Oh. oh. Those guys are tough. Okay. Anywho, what else do you have for us, Matthew? <laughs> well, I was just <clears throat> immensely disappointed, like you, OB, in that game because one— Packers won? <laughs> yeah. And then, like, watching Jordan Love do what he did, like, the Packers already had— 35 years of Hall of Fame quarterback play. Like, well, why do they need more? What, what did they do to deserve it? Well, I don't. Well, let's slow down on the Hall of Fame yeah, play. Because it was the Cowboys. Did, they came out in that zone defense, and you're like, what What are you doing? Guys were wide open, yeah. and, and they didn't adjust. I'm like, hey, but I've said it all year. You know, I've, I've been there. I said, I told, talked about it with Shereen. I said, the Cowboys do not have – a great defense, like they were being hyped up. They have a great pass, pass rush. Yeah. And if the pass rush doesn't get home, there are holes all over that defense. Does that sound like A&M a little bit? Yeah, sounds a lot like it. Yeah. Yep. Any uh, other news for us, Mr. Dawson? Well, we got Aggie Indoor Track and Field actually just started uh, this weekend. They yep. had a nice invitational there. They also hosted the first responders as well. So the actual uh, College Station Police Department beat out the College Station Fire Department. The university campus police department, as well as the Bryan uh, police department. As well. In so what? In a track and field, in the relay. Two, oh, two, okay. Or four by two hundred relay. All right. Uh, but we had a bunch well, of winners there. I would think there. the cops need to be faster, you know, because they gotta they gotta catch chase them. down the. What's the last time a cop chased somebody down? Do they do that? Yeah, they still do that. They run. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that the robbers still like ran. I thought they, you know, they have a getaway car. I don't. I'm not really familiar with the, commu- All the community. All I know is cops. I know the last time I snatched a purse, a cop chased me down. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that, that would think the the old lady would try would chase me down. <laughs> I think we should move on. Yeah, well, speaking of fast, I mean, of the 18 running events, I mean, we had Aggies place first in six of them. So mm-hmm. I think that's pretty good in and of itself. And also the Aggie women's swim team. Also got their dub on Friday against TCU. And how about that women's basketball yeah. team? Yeah, how about that I was women's there yesterday. basketball team? Absolutely unbelievable game. I got uh, notes from our uh, producer Cade there in the back. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I effort. wonder how many. You know what is believable? Because Joni believable. Taylor's a heck of a coach. She's assembled a good team. But I wonder how many. I'm not even talking about in the same weekend. I'm talking about in the same year. I wonder how often a uh, – the same school, same program, university, has beaten Kentucky in men's basketball and Tennessee in women's basketball. On the same weekend? Well, maybe even in the same year. Okay. Something to think about. The last time I think A&M beat, I think it's the first time Buzz has beat them, but the last time A&M basketball beat them was like in 2018, I believe. Been a minute. Been a while. All right, let's hit a break here. When we come back here on Tex Ags Radio, uh, we'll maybe talk a little bit about the commute here, who was interesting, and uh, Kalen DeBoer to Alabama. We'll get into that. All right, so if I'm Buzz, I'm going to talk to Buzz later, right, on the show. Humble brag. And if I'm Buzz Williams, after that impressive victory, I'm saying, guys, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. All right, no champagne room. No, no, no. We're going to have barbecue. Where are we going, OB? At Fargo's, man. Right. If you're gonna, if you, I bet you a game like that, oh, uh, Reese and Alan Blender probably get some rib tips ready on Monday. You know, yeah. hey, take these on the plane with you to Fayetteville because you earned it. Because what a – I don't know if there's much more of a, uh, of a reward for a great job than to get those rib tips. So typically I'm a protein guy. You know, yeah. I'm team protein, yeah, right? Yeah, you are. But if I'm in the carbalicious mood, yeah. what carb do you think I'm going to ask for? Well, you're going to ask for macaroni and cheese. There you go. The macaroni and the Bo- cheese. Both of them, yeah. yeah. Even though I don't know the cheese gives you the carb, just the macaroni. But it's still great. Oh, yeah. The yeah. cheese gives you the Taste. fat. You got to have the fat. I got plenty of it. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> I, I want to be polite. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> You're chiseled, young man. Fargo, 1701 Grizzled. South Texas Avenue in Bryan. Without a doubt, the what? The best barbecue in Texas, which equates to the best barbecue in the world. Did you know that's your trademark? Well, it's because it's true. Well, it's Fargo's.
Welcome back in. Tech Sags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. They are the official insurance provider of Tech Sags Radio. The difference is real. Independent insurance company built around educating you on exactly what you're paying for, doing the shopping for you so that you can accomplish all of your insurance goals. Their headquarters is on Highway 6 right here in College Station. Call them up, 888-44-ROLLO, or go to rolloinsurance.com. All right. Oh, by the way, it's the go-hour presented by The Warehouse at CC Creations. I see some of your text messages coming in. I see our friends on YouTube. Hello, our friends on the CW. What up? And the friends on The Zone. Um, I know that you treat all of these fan bases or the audience the same. You love YouTube just as much as CW, just as much as The Zone, is just as much as uh, TexAx.com. If you are a uh, fan of ours, I'm a fan of yours. Be no matter awesome. how you yeah. partake in that. I've met some really good people recently. Um, we got we got very nice fans or viewers, I should say. I don't know if there are fans, but there are viewers, listeners. Yeah, uh, customers. If you're going to be because if you're watching us, we consider you a customer. So, um, if you're our customer, we love you. Let's talk, Kalen, the board of Alabama. Okay, he's won eleven games or more in seven of his nine seasons as a coach. The guy's an absolute winner. Mm-hmm. I look at it like this, Ob. They got probably the best possible name that didn't have SEC ties. They got the best possible name that didn't have SEC ties. Um, No matter what, it's a step down because... Mm -hmm. Everybody's a step down. Right? Like Steve Young following Joe Montana. That was a step down even though Hall of Famer, right? Mm -hmm. It's not Joe Montana. Right. And he was great. In fact, I liked Steve Young more growing up. That was like the quarterback that I liked. But Joe Montana is at that time the GOAT if... I think until, he was the goat until Tom Brady right. outgoated him. So I don't think Kalen DePoor is going to win eight national championships. So I don't know, right? I think it's a step down, but it's probably the shortest step down. But not having SEC experience, it's a different animal to be the head coach at Alabama. And in the SEC, we've seen it. We've seen it work out. Obviously, Urban Meyer, when he came to the SEC, it worked out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Harson, not so much. No, not at all. What's the, what's the name? I'm forgetting his name right now. The one from Boise State that actually went to Washington. Um, um, uh, Peterson. Peterson. Chris Peterson. I think he probably made a wise choice for his personality, his recruiting, to not come to the SEC. I know he was courted many times. It is a, it is a different animal. Yes. Um, and, and that's what's going to test DeBoer. I think when you're going to – he's going to X and O with anybody. You know? But um, – Think of it in basketball, um, in a you know a comparison thing. Okay, Eddie Sutton was a tremendous coach at Arkansas and Oklahoma State. Yes, he was Trem- Hall of Fame level. Kentucky chewed him up and spit him out. Our guy, Billy Gillespie, yep. was a rising tremendous coach. Kentucky chewed him up and spit him out. I can remember having a conversation with Dennis Francione, and he was talking about one of the reasons why he wanted to leave Alabama. He said, my wife and I could not go out to dinner because somebody where every night people are coming over to your table while you're having, trying to have a quiet dinner, and they want to talk about Alabama football 24-7, 365. He told me about one guy saying, Coach, I just want you to know that Alabama football is the most important thing in my life. Yep. And you're like, uh, dude, there's more to it than that, believe me. But so, so that's what you're getting into, where everything you say is the front page story every day because they got to have a story, they got to feed the beast, and it's the most raging beast there is. And, um, you, and then every coach you face is really good. And they all have a lot of talent. Yep. And and the recruiting is going to be more cutthroat than anything you've ever experienced. And are you going to be up for that? A lot of really good coaches can can find themselves in trouble in the SEC. And um that's gonna that's gonna be where DeBoer is gonna be tested the most because he's gonna be in that situation where uh, it's just, it's just like, look, the X's and O's. I I don't worry about with that guy. He's a good, smart coach, all that. But 
how is he going to handle the all that goes with being the coach? Hell, some guys have a tro- problem handling what is required here. Kevin Sumlin. Mm-hmm. Um, and at Alabama, it's just magnified. So is he going to be able to handle that constant being under the, not just the spotlight, but the, the magnifying glass and feeding the, the, un, the, uh, the, just feeding the, the, the relentless beast that is the Alabama. So we've got program. that job in college sports. You mentioned Kentucky, Alabama. Who else? Is that it? Are those the two that are like relentless beasts? Oh, no. I, I mean, that are like on a different level. Oh, no. Uh, Ohio State's like that. You know, they had a coach one, uh, John Cooper, that won yeah. 10, 11 games. Every, you didn't beat Michigan, you're out. Michigan was about to fire, fire Jim, Jim Harbaugh, Harbaugh because yep. why? He's winning 10 games every year. So, um, but I think it, the thing about Alabama is, first of all, they've had so much success that they expect it. You know, even even Nick Saban was lamenting about it recently in recent years because, hey, you know, if you win 11 games, they tell you, you know, you're a loser. Some of the ripple effects of this, right? Um, Jalen Milrow, do you think he enters the portal because – and I don't think he does now. If he does, it'll be in the spring, in my opinion – I don't think he fits what Kalen DeBoer and Ryan Grubb like to do. Well, you know, it's possible. I would think, what do I know here? I can't crawl inside his mind, but I would think that he's a smart enough coach, and I don't know who he's bringing with him, but to go, this is the best guy I got. So I'm not going to be like that buffoon at Mississippi State and say, hey, I'm going to change everything because – I don't care what my talent is or what they do well. I think he's a sharp guy that's going to say, okay, this is the hand I'm dealt. I'm going to do the best I can with this guy because he's the best I've got and do what he does what he does best. Yeah. I mean, Arnett was a buffoon for doing what he tried to do. I think DeBoer's a just a really smart guy. Now, does he have somebody else that might be showing up in the portal? If that's the case, but as it stands right now, it still looks to me that uh, Milrow's the best, his best option at quarterback. Will Rogers was committed to Washington, mm-hmm. has gone back into the portal. He may end up staying at Washington. I, I, thought, he, I thought I saw him commit somewhere else. I haven't seen it as of this morning. <sighs> I ca- I ca- My understanding was he went back in the portal. Right, he and did. And there's a Where? chance now that Jed Fish has been hired there at Washington, he may go back to Washington. But I wonder if Kalen DeBoer's like, bro, compete with J- uh, Jalen Milrow. Come back to the SEC. I know Auburn is hot after him. I must have. Yeah, maybe that was it. Um, uh, maybe that's what I saw that where he was projected. You know, was it Auburn? Ob, was it you might have you might have seen a. I, I think there was a fake tweet that kind of got some traction out well, there. Well, that, that might have been it. Yeah. Too. So where would it say he was going? He was. I think it said he was going to Bama. But um, yeah, I don't think there's any. Uh, any uh you know truth to that now that would be interesting all right let's hit a break we'll come back i do want to get into nfl with you all right i know uh, you've talked some cowboys but like uh being austin wants more cowboy talk we got to give cj stroud and the texans a little no, love were, he was great the fighting dan campbell's got to get some love to them as well uh did the did the texans return two interceptions yeah they had touchdowns? two back-to-back pick sixes and the cowboys basic, basically gave up one pick six and one caught come almost back was yeah yeah Almost two there, too. But led to a touchdown. Felt like a lot like Matt Schaub back in the day. Mm. All right, let's hit a break. We'll come back here in a few minutes. But uh, right now we're talking Heritage Films. That is uh, a company that makes documentary films about pretty much anything you're into, right? Like if you're into playing golf with your, your siblings every Sunday or your big buddies, Chance can go out there. Chance McClain, the owner of Heritage Films, can come follow that around with you and turn it into a documentary so years later you guys can look back. Look how young we looked. or Look how old we look. Look how fat we looked. Whatever it may be, Chance can tell that story. He can tell the story about your grandfather, your father, your uncle, your grandmother, whomever it may be, whoever it may be. He can tell that story, and now you don't have to play the game of telephone when it comes to your family's story, right? Because it's recorded. It is then published, if you will. It is edited into this awesome two-hour documentary that you're going to love. You can also do the Year Flicks. The Year Flicks is a great option for the younger ones out there. 
Got a sixth grader, you know, that talk about their life, 20-minute video, Q&A form, maybe freshman year of high school, follow up with sophomore year of high school, follow up with junior, and then, bam, they graduate and they're going to Texas A&M. Whatever the story may be, Chance can do that with those options. You got Heritage Film and the Yearflix. The phone number is 713-893-8341, 713-893-8341. It's Heritage Films. Texas Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, Rollo Insurance Studio, Go Hour, presented by the Warehouse at CC Creations. Um, it was uh, a journey to get here this morning. It wasn't, be- it, at times it was unsafe, but at times it felt like a normal day. Uh, like I'd start off at certain lights and then the little a little fishtail, a little fish tail, but it, it wasn't too bad. Um, well, well, you know, fortunately there wasn't a whole lot of other traffic out there when good. I was coming. I saw a couple of accidents on the way here. Really? I didn't see them happen, but the aftermath, there was one on Texas, uh, six entering Texas, where a guy hit a pole. Yeah, there was. I'll tell you something, you know, and, and you know what? I'm going to hear, we're all going to hear this from somebody that we know who moved down here from Chicago or someplace that way, and they're going to, you guys just don't know how to drive in it. Well, let me tell you something. First of all, that's part of the reason we're here. We don't want to have to learn. But. I remember several years ago, Irma and I were still dating, so that's been at least 20 years. And I had to cover a game in Des Moines uh, at, at, uh, at uh, Ames, yep. Texas and Iowa State basketball. And they had a big 
they had a big uh, uh, blizzard, and I had to drive from Des Moines to Ames, about a 45-minute drive. Yeah. And there were cars crashed all over the place, you know. So to, to say, oh, you don't know how to drive, I, I, I saw the – I bet you I saw 30 cars that were crashed on the way from Des Moines to Ames. So – you know, don't act so high and mighty if you're a carpetbagger down here and you're coming down to act like, oh, look, you guys don't know. You don't either. You don't know Jack. Yeah. I don't know. I just felt like saying that. You don't know. You don't know how to drive on ice. Well, it, like the moment you get comfortable, that's when it happens, right? Like, oh, this is fine. I can go by my normal 75. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You can't. Right. That's where you get in trouble. That happened to me once. So are the, do you think, I, look, I don't like keep up. Are the roads going to be like this all week? Is that the plan? Uh, I think toward the end of the week, we're actually going to have nice weather. Like uh, but 40s my, nice weather, right? Uh, maybe even a little warmer than that. Oh. Uh, I, um, huh. Of course, you know, it always changes. I'll see once something on Saturday because I look at the 10-day, and then on Monday, the 10-day may be different. But uh, Well, according to this. But I think tomorrow might be worse than today. Tomorrow, 16 degrees with a high of 33. Today is and 19 and a high and are, here in College Station. And are we going to get rain tonight? Doesn't show okay. it. Okay. Doesn't okay. show it. But it, all weekend, it, ah, but I do see snow flurries expected. Later today. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Last time we had snow, I think it was So are kids going to get to go to school this week? Probably not. Huh. And well, I understand good. it because, you know, especially the kids that riding a bus, you want to put a – a lot of kids on the bus and, you know, really bad uh, uh, driving conditions. Probably not. Well, we're still going to do the show. Yeah, well, you know, nobody cares about us. You know, I say, hey, you, you can risk your life because <laughs> we got to talk about the Aggies, by gosh. Well, by golly, G, <laughs> can we talk a little NFL for a minute? Yeah, We're sure. going to start Texans because I yeah. think Cowboys well, may be well, a little Cowboys bit. Cowboys are done. And I'm gonna, I, I've said this maybe 40, 417 times this year. Definitely, that's not that many times. D'Amico Ryans and C.J. Stroud, to me, could be a glimpse of Texas A&M next year. The right coach changes the entire feel when you've got the quarterback as well. I won't disagree with that. There's a cool factor to D'Amico Ryans. He's just cool. Uh, I got to cover him. Very nice, intense. Players like playing for him. I'm not close. That's what I hear from people. Uh, but you can see it. You can sense it the way he celebrates with his teammate, uh, his yeah. his team, not his teammates. But he could be their teammate. He's, yeah, he's he looks like he's still so play. Yeah. yeah. But that that beat down to the Cleveland Browns. What made it even more special was Deshaun Watson was there. Yeah. All those picks. Will Anderson. Thank you, Cleveland, for that pick. The Texans still get the Browns' first round pick next yeah. year. I think it's like eight guys they got for Deshaun Watson. And they beat that backside. They beat them down uh, Saturday. They did. They did. Great win for Houston, man. And uh, D'Amico Ryans uh, is an example of, of what can happen quickly if you have a competent coach. And I hope Jerry Jones is, you know, learning from that. And then... Should we go Lions or Lions and Rams? Let's go there for a minute. Uh, man, that was uh, that was a uh, especially if you're a Lions fan. I was rooting for the Lions. I, they've always been my second favorite team. Um, so uh, because when I was growing up when I was a kid, you know their colors were close to the Cowboys, very similar. So that's why I adopted them for my second favorite team. Um, man, there was some angst there at the end. Defense came up though. They they made. Made the plays they had to. They're up 21 10 and only scored three points the rest of the game. And I was surprised at that because to get into 21, they were just so efficient. But, you know, that's the NFL, right? It is the NFL. I, I guess, you know what? The Rams probably had a defensive coordinator that adjusted. Adjusting. Imagine that. Adjustments. I love adjustments, don't you? God, they're so good. They, they, they kind of, they sports. I think I need to adjust right now. They sports turn me on. When a coach can make an adjustment, it sports turns me on. Yeah. And then you've got, we already talked about it. But the Cowboys the, were maladjust. How much of, of it is on Dak? Oh, a, a, a good portion. Uh -huh. Forcing balls in the, in the uh, double coverage and just making bad reads. I think the first uh, interception he threw was A, a bad route. Yeah. And then B, uh, 
you know, I thought it should have been a penalty, but you know, you're not always going to get those. And, um, but you know what, what, what the guy, he ran it in and said, oh, no, 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 it's, it's, there was contact. So it wasn't a pick six. And then your defense couldn't do anything, but yeah, Dak was not good. Um, uh, so that, and, and that's, you know, that's been a problem in the playoffs lately with him. And then, uh, but McCarthy, I just, they look like a team that's just not ready to play. And I don't know how you can't be ready to play or a team that always thinks they're better than they are. Yep. Yep. And I think that stems from coaching. I 100% agree with you. Unfortunately, A-Chain's uh, season is over. Dolphins did not look good against the uh, Chiefs. A-Chain in that game, he had six carries for nine yards, also had three catches for uh, 21 yards. Yeah, I thought the Tua couldn't get it going. I thought the Dolphins were going to have some trouble in that weather. You picked that one. I, I thought the Dolphins were going to win. I thought that the Chiefs were just having too many issues, and then it looked like old school Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. They were back to doing. Yeah, what they that's do. another thing too. You know, uh, when you've been doing it, what's I think the most, um, the truest cliche in sports is never underestimate the heart of a champion. There's something about, you know, teams that have won championships, yep. and when it's tough, you know, they just know how to win. I want to read this uh, text from Ross from East of East Texas because okay. this is excellent because it's true. David said, thanks for all those picks, and he starts talking about draft choices. I thought he was talking about interceptions because there were two pick sixes back-to-back oh. -back in that game. That is true, uh, Ross. Good, good one on that one. So, Buffalo weather. I just had the, the thing. It's supposed to be negative 10 today, and they're going to play that game. Yeah. Well, they didn't – wasn't it originally scheduled for Sunday or Saturday yeah, or Sunday, but yeah. they moved it, so I, I guess they got to play it eventually. And there's all these old guys that, that played for the Packers and Cowboys in 1967 are going, what? Are you so – you won't play because it's cold? We played in the ice bowl. Guys got frostbite. And now we didn't have heated seat, uh, benches and, and gloves, and now you guys are complaining that you – have to play with it. It ain't that cold in Buffalo right now. I mean, it's showering. It's snowing. It's uh, currently 20 degrees. Oh, it's balmy. They got nothing on, on a college station. We got 19 degrees here. Yeah. Pfft. Yeah. Whatever. Go, go play football. Go, yeah. Go play. But it's a different era, man. You know that. It's a different era. Yeah, I know. It's All softer. Right. Uh, what's the other game tonight? Uh, there's one more. Dawson, remind me. Is it the Eagles? Uh, yeah. The Eagles and Bucks. Eagles and Bucks. Go, uh, and that'll be in Tampa, right? The weather's going to be better there. Weather's going to be great. I so they put up a side by side during the Chiefs uh, Dolphins game. Yeah. In it was what negative seven degrees in Kansas City. Uh -huh. Then they show what it was like in Miami. Yeah. Sixty nine degrees. <laughs> and that's cold, in Miami. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People had jackets on. They're all bundled up. Uh, I wonder what it's going to be like in Tampa tonight. Uh, you want to look that up for it's us? It's a little Mr. bit Dawson? further north, so uh, it, it'll be a little cooler. 65 degrees currently See? at Raymond James Stadium. I've, I've covered games there. I've never been. Yeah. Next year when we travel to Florida, we might have to stop in, on, in Tampa. Well, there's no place in Gainesville, so we're either going to be flying into Jacksonville or Tampa. I'm, I'm picking Tampa over I mean, Jacksonville. Yeah. How, how, what's the difference in the drive? Pretty close? You're about the same. All right, that's Tampa. Jacksonville might be a little closer, but not enough for it to be a... Because you know I will take you for good, not that I know in Tampa, but I'll take you to good Cuban food because I hear they have a great Cuban scene there. I'm telling you the place to go in Tampa. It's actually in Clearwater. It's called Guppies. So that's the place, I'm telling you. I won't tell the story now, but I've told you before. I've been to Clearwater one other time hmm. when I tried out for the Home Shopping Network. Oh, that's right. You told me that. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. I've been one other time, too. Yeah? Herman, I took a vacation there once. Good times? Yeah, it was great. All right, let's hit a break. We'll get back to your text messages and get the show back on track. Right now, uh, you can make your decision right this second. Get lasting relief from that awful joint pain, ladies and gentlemen. You want to make sure that uh, you feel better and uh, you can start doing the things that you've always done. And if your pain is holding you back, it doesn't have to do it any year uh, anymore because this is the year to get back your life. Call QC Connects right now, the nation's leader in regenerative non-surgical pain relief. Your body has what it needs to repair and restore that damaged joint tissue, and QC Kinetics can make it happen. No drugs, no surgery, no downtime. The future of pain treatments has arrived, and QC has tens of thousands of patients that are all satisfied here in the United States. People getting 
uh, their life back from that back pain, that hip pain, any pain associated with arthritis or injury. Not a Band-Aid either. This is not a temporary fix. This is long-term revolutionary treatment that gets you moving once again, get your life back, and it's non-surgical. If this is the year that you decide to fight back against that pain, take the first step. Call, call QC Kinetics right now for a free consultation on the calendar. The phone number, 979-452-6000. QC Kinetics, 979-452-6000. That is 979-452-6000. I love this song. Queen. Oh, yeah. Great song. Uh, they Don't stop me of, now. A lot of great songs, Queen. Yeah, you have a favorite go. Queen song? Might be this one. The movie's uh, really good. I, I have a favorite one. I'm not even joking, but I can't say it because the, 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 the title's kind of uh, offensive to some. Yeah. That's a great tune, by the way. It, it's about... Uh, yeah, it's about certain... Uh, uh, at, oh, okay. And that I heard him. Yep. features. Yeah. It's Texas Radio still, I think. 
We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. We're here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. It is the closing of the Go Hour, presented by the warehouse at CC Creations. Let's return to the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. Aggies gather at the Angry Elephant. Mr. Dawson, what do you got for us? Well, I dig mock. Or, uh, sorry. I Pardon? Dog, what word is that? <laughs> I dig I dig who? Mike. <laughs> Apologize. Uh, I class dock of, mock. I dock Mike. Class 98. <laughs> he texts. That Cleveland trade may be the Texans' version of the Hershey Walker, Walker trade. trade. Yeah. But also, what about the, the Russell Wilson trade, you know, just a couple years ago? List of players that the Texans received, and you'll see some important names, especially the last game. Will Anderson, Tank Dell, I know he's hurt, but Damian Pierce, Kenyon Green, Christian Harris. Yeah, Christian Harris had a big they did sack. a great job. Yeah. And the Thomas Booker, and then they still got another first-round pick. Who, whoever, whoever's drafted for the Texans the last couple of years has done a great job. Nick Cesario. Uh but I will also say you cannot compare it to the Herschel Walker trade unless this team wins Super Bowls. That is like, you got to win Super Bowls. Yeah. Not just one. Yeah. Th- three. Not happy you should have been like five. That. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> you got so happy. I'm like a Texas Longhorns fan. I'm, I'm living in the past. They just picked up that dude. Uh, what's his name? from uh, Bond. Yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah Bond. Bond. The- and they got the other kid too, right? Um, Muhammad. Didn't they pick up Jabbar Muhammad? Yeah, from, from Washington. Washington? Hmm. Must be, must be very active in nil funding. And you know, hey, and if they are, good job. Good job. What else we got there, Doss? Awesome. Well, other transfer portal news. If you follow college football, you probably know who Cam Ward is, Washington yeah. State quarterback. Mm. He was originally planning to go to the NFL. Could have been a ploy to maybe get a little extra money, you know, sent his way in the Mario Cristobal and Miami's nil uh, fund. Certainly funded Cam Ward. And he's going to be playing in Miami next year, so that, that's it's kind of a big name. Miami's uh, next target was going to be Will Rogers if they weren't able to get mm-hmm. Cam Ward. So let's get one more in. Uh, well, let's talk about former Aggies. I guess Blake Smith, former Aggie, tight end, played for Oklahoma. He's now transferring to Texas State. It's not huge, but you know we like to look after our former Aggies. <clears throat> so we're playing for DJ, DJ Kin in that high flying offense over there. Always heard about what great hands he had, and the only thing I remember him was dropping a pass late against Ole Miss. Miss. Yeah, we yeah. both remember that yeah. one. That one, it would have made a big difference. Yeah, could have, could have, could have. Yeah, could have kept a drive going. Ob, uh, who you got to in today, tonight's games? Oh, I'm going to take the. Uh, I'm going to take the Bucks. The Bucks, Mike Evans. Just because I'll never take the. I, you know, I hate the Eagles, and then I'm going to take the Bills. Yeah, I am too. Bucks and Bills. Well, buddy, appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you very much. When we come back here on Tech Sags Radio, we're going to talk to Tom Hart. He'll be on uh, Zoom. We'll talk to him shortly. Billy Lucci at 935 from Detroit. And then Buzz Williams at 10 o'clock. That and much, much more. It is Tech Sags Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio.
How did I know Tom was going to have this response? So our YouTube audience can't hear. <laughs> Got a little <laughs> M&M in the background. It's Tex-Ax Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. Let's go to the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Our friend Tom Hart there on the uh, Brian Foley Law Hotline. Am I the, am I the only one? Like, really? Am, I'm the only one? I, you might be, buddy. So for those who don't know, you tweeted yesterday. I don't have it in front of me, but basically you were yesterday years old when you found out that Eminem was named after his first name, Marshall Ma- or first and last name, Marshall Mathers, the Eminem, which became the spelling of E Eminem, whatever, however he spells it. Yeah, the initials. Yeah. yeah. M M M. Yeah. Are you a big Marshall Mathers fan? Yeah, I've always I've celebrated his entire catalog. Yeah, I've always been a fan. I mean, I'm not saying I knew him before he hit mainstream. I wasn't like, you know, watching his earliest stuff and listening to his earliest stuff. But yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got even like he had one really bad album. Uh, I forget the name, but it's still on my phone and pops up randomly. It was it was the bad. relapse, but um, yeah, it was it was right after it was like two albums after Eight Mile came out. Okay. Um. And I was watching the game last night, the Detroit game, and he did the open for NBC. And Mike Tirico was great. He he referenced the Detroit fans all having sweaty palms, getting ready to watch the game. You know, no no mention of mom spaghetti or anything like that. But I was like, I, this is really cool. Like he's such an intriguing personality because he's so private. You could argue, like as a, you could argue, if you wanted to do this, as a Celebrity fan of an NFL team currently in the playoffs, he's more interesting than Taylor Swift. I, I say that because my teenage daughters are not down here to bash my head in yet. Um, but, you know, with his production background and his work with Dre and uh, his skills and his uh, his background in the movie, like everything, I, yeah. And so we're sitting there last night and the game's on and my wife comes in. I was like, oh, yeah, Eminem's there. And he... He was in the open for NBC. And she, <laughs> truth tree, she was actually the one who said it. She's like, hey, do you think his name <laughs> came from the initials? And I my, I just stared at her. I was like, what are you, are you serious? Do you think that's it? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I got blasted on the social media because I posted that. But I think it's great. I think it's great, like, as humans, when you learn something new. Like, we should all be striving to learn. I learned something new last night, and I'm proud of myself. I'm proud. I mean, I'm- pride, probably not the right word. But. Well, I am proud that you actually told the world because some people would have withheld that information and didn't want to be embarrassed. Go ahead. I'm here to teach. I'm here to help others because, well, according to you, probably 99% of the population knew that. There's other people out there that didn't. And so I was able to share that information and say, hey, don't be embarrassed of your ignorance. Be embarrassed if you're afraid to learn, right? I'm not afraid to learn something new. And therefore, I can share it with you. I had at least, you know, a handful of people reply and say, dude, I didn't know that either. But obviously, overwhelmingly, most people were like, you're an idiot. Tom, I don't want to spend too much time on Taylor Swift, but you made a comment that reminded me of a conversation I had with my daughters this weekend. Uh, Travis Kelsey was on a commercial, and they both were like, "Uh, he's only got that commercial because he's dating Taylor Swift. I'm like, it's one of the greatest tight ends of all time. He was doing commercials before. You just know who he is now. And they would have cut me in the throat if they could. That's how much Swifties love Taylor Swift. Yes. However, and that being the case, he is now very exposed commercially. Yeah. So I am curious, some of his extra, whether it's the Pfizer stuff or I think State Farm, he was already in with Mahomes probably before the season started. Um, but somebody should do a deep dive. I, I wonder how many new endorsement deals popped once that relationship started. Makes a difference. You know what makes a difference, Tom? Here, as I do for a cheesy uh, segue, attacking the rim the way Boots Radford attacked the rim and opened things yeah. up. And Wade Taylor, too, man. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it, it, it is the embodiment of what Buzz preaches. It is toughness on both ends of the floor. Uh, Wade against ranked teams is just unbelievable. I mean, I had the Auburn game, and um, he came in averaging 35 against top 25 teams. Um, with the through the first two 
and he's he's got to be able to carry that team offensively the caveat being he needs help to do so right like from a point production standpoint if you're going to win big games wade taylor's got to score he's got to score a ton but he can only score if boots is doing his job and so finally getting those two back on the same plane which has kind of been trending that direction over the last couple of weeks that's a different difference maker for this program and in a league that is absolutely wide open uh, that can be the difference between you know, winning a conference title or getting a, a double buy in the tournament or whatever that might look like um, once we get into March. The thing is, we knew it's like the same script every year. And I don't know how the rest of the season is going to play out, but we know a Buzz Williams led team is going to go to the lab and they're going to figure out their deficiencies and they're going to come back and look like a different team. And sometimes it happens earlier in the season, sometimes it happens mid season. And I hope a sign of things to come. Well, I, I will say the the next deficiency to iron out um, because when you get a performance like that and you knock off an elite, that is an, an elite Kentucky team, by the way, you knock off an elite Kentucky team, the, the bar continues to rise. Like the, the standard has always been the standard for buzz, but okay, what's, what's available for us to accomplish? Um, and so what do we need to fix? And defensively, the challenges come. I was talking to Buzz about this before Auburn, and I asked him how the new block charge rule is impacting what he teaches defensively and what he asks his guys to do. Because his his defensive approach is also a microcosm of the personality of Buzz and his teams, which is be tough, help out your teammate. Like it, those two very simple things. They funnel guys to the baseline and they take charges with help coming from the opposite side of the lane. That's not there anymore. They're not getting those whistles. I think um, heading into the Auburn game, they'd only drawn 10 charges all season. Last year, Henry Coleman had nearly 10 himself over the entire course of the season. So the adjustment defensively, which has been minor, a couple of tweaks here and there, I think is what's going to make a difference for this team going forward. Um, you, you hope you can rely on Boots and Wade to be themselves and uh, you know not that they're going to go for you know combined for 50 every game um but to be productive enough and i think the the offensive output and that explosion against kentucky is a is a great sign for this a&m team one thing that i came away from that it was my first chance to really watch kentucky watch them watch them right and my goodness man it doesn't matter what year it is those guys have got lottery picks galore some that don't even start yeah yeah um you know, Reed Shepard is a is a fantastic story. He was, uh, depending on which recruiting service you look at, um, he wasn't a top 100 recruit, according to some. Um, now, number one recruiting class, and he was part of it, but he was he was almost viewed as an afterthought because his dad played at Kentucky, won a national championship. Of course, you know he's in state. Of course, he's going to come here. Uh, the dude may be a first rounder. I mean, he does a lot of things really well. Um, obviously, making a play at the end. I, I still, we were on the air, David, I'm going to share this kind of peel back the curtain. We were already on the air because I was doing the Florida game that followed on ESPN. And we were watching the A&M Kentucky game, Jimmy Dykes and I, while we were, while we were calling the game. And the director's like, May, guys, maybe I should turn that off. Cause we, we were only on ESPN news or the app or whatever. Cause we were waiting to go on, on linear television once that game finally ended and we're like, no, we, like this is the best game all weekend. Like we we can't not watch this. So the foul at the end was a little unclear because we were multitasking, uh, whether that was legitimate or not. Um, and I'm not a referee basher, but I thought there were a couple in, in any game like that where there's that many possessions and it's that close, there's gonna be a couple of whistles where you you scratch your head. Buzz looked a little perplexed, and I don't blame him. Are you talking about the uh, the uh, boots? Three that should have been an and one that he got fouled that one or the the Wade so, at the end, the one at the very end. Now now the the boots three where he kicked out his foot. Um, that is a, a really hard foul to process. I think for the average fan, and I don't know if Buzz spoke to it, um, but it's when you have a rule in place that is a point of emphasis for the officiating crew that is that they're judged based on whether or not they make that call to the letter of the law. Great officials are going to make that call even in the face of unpopularity. So I think that was the right call by the letter of the law and by the rule book. 
Um, I, I couldn't tell if it was the right call at the very end um, to send Shepard to the free throw line. Right. Uh, let's talk Kalen DeBoer for a moment because I think they got themselves a guy. Like, obviously, his resume was it 11, 11, uh, 7, 11 win season, something like that. Ridiculous number. I am interested how he does transition to the SEC because it is a different animal. You know it better than anybody. Well, he's he walked into a place with the greatest coach ever, and he got handed a treasure map. You, you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't want to say it's impossible to fail um, because obviously we've seen great coaches, especially come from outside the footprint and struggle. But remember, obviously, Saban, West Virginia guy spent time at Cleveland, Michigan State ends up at LSU and wins a national championship. He very few connections to the South at that point. Now, I'm just using him as an example, but he's got the facilities in place. And, and by I don't mean the buildings. I mean like everything in place from a recruiting standpoint and the blueprint that that Alabama program has built over the years under Saban by doing things the right way, not cutting corners. So everything's already installed for him. And he, I think the secret to his success is he's had a very loyal staff. that has been with him going back to his NAIA days at Sioux Falls, uh, both of his coordinators. It looks like he's bringing his OC with him. Uh, Saban tried to hire his OC grubs last year. I, I had their game in the Alamo bowl against Texas two seasons ago. And um, it was one of the most impressive production meetings with the coaches that I've had. Um, and, and I, I said at the time, because their, their athletic director shortly thereafter left and went to USC, um, but I said, this guy's never leaving Washington, and his coaches are never leaving. They're loyal to each other. They're building something special. They've got a great team. They're going to go on a run, um, and I think if the athletic director hadn't left, probably he – I don't know if he would say, would have said no to Alabama, but um, – they could have been there for a very, very wow. long time uh, because they kind of built at Washington, not at the same level, obviously, but they knew how to build a program in a way to have long-term sustainability. And that's what you have to have at Bama. Well, then Jed Fish goes to Washington. That's yeah. the name that I was really intrigued by when A&M had their search. He wasn't my 1A, 1B, but he was somebody I was like, I, I, there's something about this guy. He goes into a pretty good situation, maybe loses some dudes, obviously. Uh, but now that reputation, especially going into the Big Ten, helps. Without a doubt. Um, he is he's kind of an offensive mastermind. Um, and, and the talent that they had at Arizona was really next level. I thought very underrated. Uh, they lost one game in regulation all season. They demolished Oklahoma in the bowl game. Um, his quarterback is incredible. Wide receiver, I think think is going in the draft I, I i don't know for sure um but listen in this day and age of of the transfer portal and double transfers being available uh, from what we've seen in basketball at least dude can bring those guys with them and in the university of arizona people aren't aware are going it's going through a major financial crisis they lost like 250 million dollars last year because of a couple of accounting errors, uh, which sounds crazy. And I talked to Jed about it this year at the bowl game, and he's like, it doesn't really impact us because the athletic side is privatized to an extent. But once a school starts cutting other resources or classes or majors because of finances, it's really hard to justify paying a football staff like that. So I think it was a perfect mood, move for Fish to make. And uh, if he brings some of that talent with him, yeah, Washington's going to keep it going. So what about – Will Rogers, does he maybe go to Auburn? Does he maybe go to Bama? Does he stay at Washington because he's got Jed Fish, who is offensive-minded? How do you think that plays out? I don't know. I, I don't think we saw the real Will Rogers this year. Um, had a had an injury that was severe that he had, had a really hard time coming back uh, from. He played in the Egg Bowl at the end of the season. He could not throw the ball with any velocity, uh, any accuracy. I don't know from a health standpoint where he stands and if he can regain that strength. He was never like a, a rifle armed quarterback, but he was a perfect fit in the air raid. So I, I think that's probably what he's looking for because he just re-entered the portal. Um, but it'll be intriguing to see where where Will Rogers ends up. By the way, my prediction is, you know, in, in 10 years, we're talking about Will Rogers as one of the great college football coaches and, and offensive minds. I mean, cause that, that guy's built for it. His dad is a high school coach. He loves the game. Um, 
He knows how to attack defenses. I just don't know physically if um, if he's going to recuperate in a way that will allow him to regain his form. I, I don't have that answer. So another day, and Harbaugh's still at Michigan. Does that you know? Now, well, how long is that going to last? You think it's going to last with McCarthy and Quinn? He's interviewing in L.A. today. Schefter reported. Okay. So yeah. I don't think there's much time left. It seems like the Cowboys could have a head coaching vacancy. I mean, is there is there not a match made in heaven or hell, depending on which direction you look and how your you know where your fandom lies? Then Jim Harbaugh on the sideline at Jerry World. I mean, come on, that's the perfect fit. I mean, it's amazing. Until you said that, I didn't realize how much I need that to happen because I think it'll work, <laughs> and I also think it'll be great theater. It would be incredible theater. I want him. I want him out pregame, you know, in his gloves and his his turf shoes, playing catch in the end zone at Jerry World, catching passes, warming up Dak or whoever would be his quarterback. Uh, it's a fascinating story, by the way. And if that happens, the only thing that you can be guaranteed is that Jimmy Sexton is going to buy another <laughs> beachfront property because this dude, who's got seventy five percent of the SEC head coaches just made a killing on on the Saban retirement. He j- had just picked up the boar like in October as a client because he's ahead of the game and he probably, not probably, he knew what was coming down the line. He knew who was positioned well and uh, he gets everybody raises. Our old friend, by the way, Augie Garrido, uh, bless his heart, He and, and Aggie fans will love this. He knew they called him Soggy Burrito and he thought it was the funniest thing ever. But when he finally stepped down at Texas, he got every legitimate baseball coach in the country a significant raise. Like everybody got a raise when that Texas job came up. And they ended up going through like six, seven guys before they finally found their guy. Uh, Saban's deal is going to have ripple effects on the salary standpoint for a long time. My my prediction. Hey, let's close out with this one. Did you see Mark Stoops uh, coach's ballot that uh, he left out oh. Louisville completely from his top 25? Uh, listen, what we love about college sports is, uh, is the passion and the other P word that comes with that is pettiness. Um, there's, there's nothing I appreciate more than that. And by the way, if, if Jeff Brom had done that to Kentucky, the Kentucky fans would be up in arms and wanting to burn down Papa John stadium or whatever it's called now. Um, so I, I can appreciate that. It is incredibly petty, but it's also hysterical. I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. I can't wait for Mike Elko not to put the Sark on his ballot as well or vice versa. So good. Brother, thank you so much, man. Enjoy your day. David, thanks, man. I'm going to go um, I'm gonna go watch 8 Mile like for the next six hours. Watch it like three times through. And after that, straight out of Compton, please. You got to yes. go, go in the beginnings, how it all started. <laughs> That's the best. See you, bro. Thanks, bud. Later, man. Tom Hart there on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Appreciate his time. All right, let's hit a break. We'll come back with a round Aggieland and maybe a little around the SEC as well. A moment for Caldwell Country Chevrolet. Highway 21 in Caldwell online, caldwellcountrychevrolet.com. Looking for a new vehicle? Well, some of you might be because of this weather. Like, I saw some of the accidents on the way to, to work this morning. Hopefully you weren't, and I'm not making a joke about that. Hopefully everybody's safe. But when you are in the uh, market for a new vehicle, right, like you need to uh, consider Caldwell Country Chevrolet for multiple reasons. Reason number one, great pricing. That's what where we all start. Like, where am I going to get the best deal, right? That's what we want. Who's not going to lie to me? Who's going to give me good customer service? Who's going to make sure that I get a good trade in? That's called Wall Country Chevrolet. They did it for me. They've done it for many other TechSags employees. They're fantastic. They've done it for a, a wide variety of, of people all around the Brazos Valley, all around the state, really, because people come to this area to buy their vehicles at Caldwell Country Chevrolet. You can start your search online. You see all the great deals that they have, but also the great people that work there. You're going to love it. Uh, if you have not been to Caldwell Country Chevrolet, you're missing out. It's not a far drive. We're talking 15 minutes, the very edge of Brian to the beginnings of Caldwell Short conversation way, but you'll see the difference when you step on the lot and do business with the good people there at Caldwell Country Chevrolet. Highway 21 in Caldwell online, caldwellcountrychevrolet.com.
Welcome back into Tech Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. We're here in the Rollo Insurance Studio, and it is now time for Around Aggieland, presented by Normandy State Bank. Normandy State Bank, rock solid banking. The website is normandystatebank.com. And with that, we've got Kay Nagley. Do you like the cold, David? No, I hate it. You don't? I have, mean, you I don't always, I, have you always lived in warm weather areas? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I way. like it. I, I don't mind it coming, like, I like seasonal changes for uh-huh. sometimes what you can wear, and I like a touch of it, Yeah. but especially in this industry, I've done a lot of live shots in frigid conditions, which my jaws lock up, I'm uncomfortable, nose run, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand it. <laughs> what would you rather do? 110 degrees, Texas yes. A&M football practice yes. for two hours, Even though- or this, outdoors. I have, for two hours. I have passed out at a Texas a oh, football practice before. That is true. I've been there. And I you. would rather be passing out <laughs> in 110 degrees, which is saying something because that was not a great day. <laughs> what did Nick call your little outfit today? Uh, He said I look like a... Snowboarder girl. Snowboarder. Yeah. Gonna it, go shred some fresh hat. pow. It's just You do hat. look like you might participate in the X Games. It's cold. I just, I don't know. I don't like chilly weather. And I was like, well, what if my head gets cold? Go do some slope style. What? What's the name Fresh. of that dude? Sean. Sean White. Sean White. White. You got a little Sean, Sean White. White action. He's a redhead, going. though. Yeah, I could absolutely. I've tried to ski once, and it did not go as planned. So. Believe it or not, I don't do the ski thing. Not my yeah, thing. Yeah, it's just the cold weather. It just gets me. And no, just I don't want to die. That too. <laughs> Sunny Bono, like a lot of you. You could don't. probably do that being in 110 degree weather, though. And, die? I mean, and pass out from dehydration. No, nah, not once has it happened. Well, passing Ever. out isn't great. Either. No, <laughs> I don't recommend it. Anyways, we're gonna move on to some around Naggy Land. Besides, do the we have freezing, stuff going on? With besides t- the freezing temperatures okay. outside, we do. So we do have off for MLK Day today as a student, but school is planned to start tomorrow. But is it? Oh, if there's anybody listening who has any power that could maybe make that not happen, students would greatly appreciate the day off. It's coming from myself, anyways. But on the football trail, Texas A&M added former Fresno State tight end. Trey Watson via the transfer portal. He was committed to Washington and then did decommit. They had the uh, window that opened that he could transfer. Um, and he will now reunite with his former teammate, Jalen Henderson. Um, Watson was an all Mountain West honorable mention honoree in 2023. There are his uh, stats. He has two years of eligibility uh, left. So another great get from Mike Elko. I wish I could tell you what number that was, but he's just been absolutely absurd. 20? Nick says 20, so I'm going to believe Nick on that. Yeah, his tone there was a little mean. A little <laughs> he was, mean. He's, he's <laughs> just angry about the hat for whatever reason. Um, moving on, we've talked about it plenty today, so I want to get into some women's basketball. They are still undefeated at home this season, 11-0 people. They are having a heck of a season. They beat the Lady Vault 71-56 to yesterday. Um, Aisha Kulabale had 19 points um, as she – Paced a trio of double-figure Aggies, including Sahara Jones, who got the Aggies going pretty early. She had a big game. And then as well as India Rogers, they both contributed 15. They have a big game coming up. They have a week off, but top-ranked South Carolina will come to College Station on Sunday for a 4 p.m. tip. So if you have not been to an Aggie women's basketball game, I highly encourage you to get there this Sunday, we've seen what a packed read can do for, for men, so why not pack it for women? So uh, I showed up a little late yesterday. I showed up mm-hmm. with about four minutes left in the first half, second mm-hmm. quarter. And You didn't uh, come say hi? No, I was busy. <laughs> I was doing multiple things. Not, enjoy, not only enjoying the game, but uh-huh. uh, did you see the onslaught of little girls on the court at halftime? Oh, was your daughter dancing? Isla was one of the 5,000 dancers Aww, on the court. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, so, you know, I had to, I had to get up close and take video little, and all that good stuff. Doing but, a little dance. But the point is, when I parked, they were up uh-huh. four. I was listening to the game on the drive uh-huh. there. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, they were up 15. 11-0 like, run in the second quarter. Yeah. They, were, they were on fire. Tennessee only scored eight then. Yeah, they were, they were cooking. And winning against Tennessee women's basketball is always, like, kind of a check mark. So it was, a, it was a definitely a good win for them. On the same basketball front, uh, Wade Taylor and Boots Radford had a heck of a game, combined for 49 as Texas A&M pulled off the stunning upset of number six Kentucky. Um, the Aggies notched their first win over John Calipari since 2018. Also, Buzz Williams' first win over him. Um, Texas A&M will now head on the road to Arkansas, where, like Obi said, haven't had the best luck. Had some travel issues in the past, too. So Last year, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, it's weird how the timing of... 
you know, cold weather. I, it's starting to add up every year. But yeah. I think this is the worst weather I've had since I've been here. Really? Like, from a cold standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, Just from degrees. I know that snowmageddon that happened in 2020 no, was that 2020 where it like really snowed here yes that was my freshman year yeah well, so. i wasn't here i was i was still reporting in houston man, oh, um, man i've been here longer than you yeah it's crazy but if you want to add my real time here <laughs> yeah back back in the day uh yeah like i said arkansas that will be on tuesday that is an 8 p.m tip so make sure to catch all the action as the aggies will be on the road and that's a little track and field action a m opened their state of the art R.A. Murray Faskin 38 Indoor Track and Field Stadium this past weekend in dazzling fashion. They won six events and set seven Aggie all-time top 12 performer marks on Saturday. Texas A&M Track will return to action next weekend on the 20th to host the Ted Nelson Invitational. It's good to see them hosting when last year they couldn't just because of construction and things like that. So hopefully they just continue building and getting more records at that new facility. Uh, it looks really nice. Yeah, it is yeah. really cool. Just We're driving by, it looks put to like, just having all the track stuff on one side of the, I yeah. know. He Clean. Made, yeah, it just looks put together. And yeah. Like it's supposed to be there. The big winter storm, according to the Alamo Aggie, was 2021. Mm. Mm. It, I think it was the spring. February of 21? It was the spring of 2020. Yeah. yeah. So like my second semester. Yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah, Anywho. that was that was fun though. That was like a day off of campus. Everyone was like sledding around. And it like was snow here, it and... snowed, snowed, right? Yeah, it, well, yeah it in was, Houston, it was a little it bit snowed. Like, yeah, no, it was like I, a snowman. It, it, yeah, there were little snowmen. People were like sledding on campus. Yeah, pretty fun. Maybe Good we times. could have that tomorrow. What else do we have? That's all I That's got. It? Yeah. Hi. What hey, there? besides uh, traffic's back. I mean, not that I can't. I mean, really, that's this morning. I can't really say anything. Yeah, that's true. No, I can't really say because I'm a student, but um, I've been here, so I feel like I can claim it. <laughs> you're, you're a veteran. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Of course. All right. We'll try to do a round of SEC a little bit later. Let's take a break here. We'll come back. Billy Lucci from Detroit. That's right. Um, did he party last night in Detroit? <laughs> we got to ask those kind of Hopefully questions. Hopefully he did. Uh, I have a feeling Dan Campbell was probably working, but maybe. We'll ask. Millican Reserve Time, Farm to Table Community. They are in College Station. They've got homes. They've got trails. They've got wide open spaces with a mission to build a healthy community around nature. Uh, they're committed to trading lightly on the land because Millican Reserve is a sanctuary for family, for nature, and for community. They're dedicated to the conservation of a healthy community, respect for that native landscape, and they've got 2,600 acres of open space, farms, 30 miles of trails, and of course, they've got wonderful homes out there. They connect families to nature and to each other. It's a great place to go, maybe not in this weather, because you know, I don't know how much you want to be outside, but when the weather gets you know good again, go out there and just go enjoy the nature, right? Climb the trees, go the hiking, do the biking, do the canoeing. They've got it all out there. It's a, a wonderful place where families come together to re uh, relax and reflect, to explore and to discover. They've got wonderful neighborhoods there as well. you got the creek, the hollow, the meadows. To learn more about all those locations, visit MillicanReserve.com. Again, that website is MillicanReserve.com.
Welcome back into Tech Sacks Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio Lions with a huge win yesterday. Dan Campbell and his Detroit Lions uh, beat the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Let's go to the uh, Brian Foley Law Hotline. Billy Lucci, our executive editor and co-owner, was there for it all. How was it, Billy? How was that atmosphere? Oh, David, it was, uh, I don't know how it came off on TV. I got a couple of texts during the game saying it sounded really loud, but that was, uh, that was his college uh, atmosphere. You know, like, uh, you felt like you were at, I don't know, cause I haven't been to many, you know, college indoor games, but it was as loud as anywhere, anywhere I've been for a game. I'll say that it, it reminded me. I compare it to, I remember going, and ironically enough, Jared Goff uh, came out the winner in that game, too. He outdueled Drew Brees. I was at the Superdome uh, when the Saints played the played the Rams several years ago, and uh, the Rams upset them. That was that pass interference game where they called the uh, the bogus <clears throat> pass interference call, and then the, uh, the Rams ended up winning. So I would compare it to that as far as loudest. Uh, pro games I've been to, and way up there with college, you know the dome thing. We don't we don't play many games in domes in college, and then on top of that, I, I'll keep calling them domes. I guess now they're roofed stadiums. But thank God, by the way, with the weather up here. Um, but they, uh, you know, when we do, it's bowl games, you know, so it's split crowds, so you don't get the same effect. But this was everyone in unison. There might have been. A few hundred Rams fans there. I mean, it was it was intense. It was it felt like Detroit. Nuno was good. It felt like the Lions were going to win from pregame. As soon as you walked into the stadium, as soon as you landed at the airport, uh, everyone on that line sideline was calm and shaking hands and smiling. And uh, damn, Stafford and and Nakua made it close, didn't they? I and mean, that was incredible. But I got to see, it was cool seeing, it's almost like you forget, you look around, you're like, pregame down there, oh, there's Bobby Brown, there's Josh Reynolds, uh, you know, you got Dan, but you've also got, first person we saw down on the sideline, Seth, and I was Aaron Glenn, and then, you know, Coach Clark walks up, and Seth, damn near in tears, you know, that was his strength coach at A&M, and then... You know, Don Muehlbach, who I did not see, unfortunately. You know, he's he's coaching there too. He's a deep snapping, probably one of the best deep snappers ever in the NFL. And then you, uh, Seth played with I think a couple of the other guys on the Lions staff, and I mean, just kind of everywhere you look. And then down there, you had Barry Sanders, you had Eminem, you had the Will Ferrell lookalike drummer for the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Chad Smith. You had. Uh, Megatron was down there. It was really cool. It just felt like this city had been waiting on that. Not felt like it. Obviously, it's well documented how long they've been waiting on that. But uh, you know, I don't. I don't think I could be any happier for someone than I was for for Dan last night. You want to talk about stress? As I'm sitting there going, you just know what he puts into it, and if you know how much he cares and how much he puts into it and how much the the team and everything matters to him, it's just like, you got to win this game. And it was intense. You know, it was intense. They put 21 points on the first three possessions and then three the rest of the game, and they somehow held on to win. So, whew, man, it was fun. But uh, I'll tell you this, if anyone was wondering why he couldn't leave Detroit, that I said it from the get-go, you know, to anyone that asked me, and people did ask me, he wasn't going to leave here. I mean, like you see this city last night and after the game and uh, in zero degree weather with like a negative 20 wind chill and people are just out in the streets going crazy. Like he's unfinished business here, <clears throat> you know, not just this season, but he, he came here. He's the most loyal dude you're, you're going to meet David and the Lions organization gave him a shot that a lot of, organizations didn't because he was a tight ends coach. He had not been a coordinator. Um, he interviewed for several jobs, didn't get them. And, you know, it, it, it's well documented what everybody said when he, when he uh, took over in Detroit, they thought that was going to be a, a short lived 
you know, over and done with thing and, and look where we're at now. So hopefully, I don't know. I don't know who who I'd rather see him play next week. We'll find out today. Uh, but either one, they get another home game. Well, what about the other one? The uh, the other win for you this weekend, the uh, Texans taking, I mean, beating down Ooh. the Cleveland Browns, man. Like for a city that has seen so many disappointing uh, playoff games in, in NFL football, I, I didn't rest easy until I mean I thought they were gonna win the whole time, but you know, just being a Houston fan, like you never know. Well they they, they certainly finished right. that one. Oh man. I mean and what timing too. Like whenever one of your teams it's no stressor, right? Like I you leave the Kentucky game by the time you get settled and situated and it's a close game at the half and then it's uh what was it wait, yeah, and and then you get those two pick sixes like back to back like that, just Talk about loud. I would love to have been an energy that, you know, done a double dip. Uh, but Reed Arena, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute, was, was a pretty good alternative on Saturday. But, yeah, that win for the Texans was spectacular. Um, what they've done in year one with D'Amico and Stroud. And, again, you talk about, you know, Aggie connection. There's Gerard Johnson coaching, you know, one of the biggest, names in football right now in Shroud and what he's been able to do as a rookie. But I thought they were going to beat the Browns. We talked about that Friday. I mean, I also thought the Cowboys were going to beat the Packers. I think I said there's no chance they'll lose to Green Bay. So, you know, loves doing some pretty special things uh, over there as well. But, man, I thought they beat Cleveland. I thought Cleveland's luck, not luck, but I just thought they were kind of living a little bit of a, a little bit of a lie. And you knew what the atmosphere was going to be like in Houston on Saturday. You knew what they were walking into. And, and I just thought, I thought that was a lot. I really did. I, I thought it'd be a close game. I thought the, I thought the uh, Texans would win. And, you know, both these teams with massive ones next week, you know, this time, though, I guess the Texans are going on the road, what they might be. There's a world we live in where they'd be going to Kansas City, right? But almost certainly uh, Baltimore, I would assume. Uh, you never know, man. Let D'Amico Ryans cook it up and see if he can slow down Lamar Jackson and see what happens. Talking NFL to, playoffs, things get crazy. Talking to Billy Lucci here on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Billy, so that's only part of the success you had this weekend. Dan Campbell wins. The Texans win. I'm and, glad I'm getting credit for all this success. Thank well, you, David. Well, I mean, I'm sure you felt really good about it, right? Like you, you had to. Be, <laughs> I felt great. Like and it's a, like, hey, oh, sorry, we get the delay here, but we've had some rough sports weekends. So yeah, we do on a Monday. We like to come in. I'm going to come in tomorrow and sit in the studio, but we come in on a Monday. We like to talk when we have a good, when we have a good sports weekend. Well, the Aggie basketball team, man, like. Talk about a game that, like, that team, not just the win, Billy, not just the win, although the win goes a long, long way, but the way that team played basketball, not that I expect for Wade to always go 6 or 12 from the three-point line, but the way they attacked the rim, the way they, they offensive rebounded the ball, the way they played that entire game, that's the team I think we signed up for this year. No doubt. <clears throat> and I said it, I think, mean, Friday. I was like, they're not going to beat Kentucky if they play like they've been playing. In order to knock off Kentucky, they've got to play. I don't know. I don't think I said be the team we thought they would be, but essentially they've got to elevate their game in so many levels and get back to almost like the team we've seen in spurts this year. And it's amazing they put together the non-conference resume they did um, because because of the injuries, because of the lack of consistency, and because, you know, frankly, at times they were just not shooting well at all. Um, it, it's amazing that they did, or did what they did in the non-conference. But just that basketball that it, – it's guys not giving up on fast breaks and coming up with incredible blocks like Solomon Washington did. It's, it's Wade playing 40 minutes and, and riding the highs and lows against against the – Team full of you know NBA players in Kentucky, and you know you're not good. It's not going to come easy the whole game. It's it's weathering those storms. It's Henry Coleman figuring out how to contribute. It's, it's Andy Garcia. I thought he made so many plays Saturday, little ones, big ones. 
but you just watched him and how much he impacted uh, the result or whose hand whose hands the ball ended up in, whether it be just kind of tipping a rebound, keeping it alive. I thought he was a freaking dog on Saturday. But really, you know, what Boots and Wade did, uh, like you said, in terms of Boots, you could tell at the beginning, okay, if he's going to get to the basket like that, A&M will have a chance. If he can consistently do that, A&M will have a chance. And then when Wade starts hitting shots, and, and really not even just hitting shots, but just feeling it, because then he starts you know, getting closer to the basket, and then it just everything else opens up. But I thought those two were, you know, there's Batman and Robin. Those were two Batmans on Saturday. You know, Nuno, there's like eight Batman. I know you're a Batman guy. It's like they pop up, and, you know, there's like 60 of them, it feels like. And the Aggies had two of them on Saturday. There was no Robin. It was it was it was two Batmans. They needed everything they could get because they were playing an outstanding Kentucky team. Uh, zero just went insane down the stretch. You, you know whether a guy coming down and popping three threes in a row in the closing minute or so, a um, couple minutes against Kentucky. You know, it's not like they had a 12-point lead. I mean, this guy just comes in and just starts going unconscious, just dumb from the three-point line. You overcome that, Calipari and and Big Blue Nation. There's a lot of Kentucky fans there, as always. And to overcome all of that and the officials and the referees and win, I mean, come on. That, that, was, uh, that was pretty remarkable grit. And I was happy for Buzz. I'm pissed I'm not there to talk to him today, but um, I was happy for him, really happy for the guys. Um, I don't think people realize, like, you see Henry afterwards, he just how happy these guys are. And, and, and they're not grown-up men. They're college athletes. They're, some of them are a year removed from high school, two years, three years. And when things aren't going good, it's rough. You know, and, and they read what's said about them, and they uh, they read what's written about them, they hear what's said about them. And not to say, like, look, you play college sports, you, you know, a lot of times now these guys are getting good NIL money, as long as it's fair critiques and criticism. But they don't, they're not confined to just that. They hear and read everything. Um, what never changes in a program like Buzz is, is the work ethic and how hard they're trying to get it done. So when, when they're struggling and can't figure it out and then do in such tremendous fashion. And like I was getting to, I don't think people realize like what a, a respectful, appreciative group of players that is. And I think it comes off when uh, subscribers and listeners hear, the, hear them behind the microphone or at the podium or, you know, when they come in the tech tech studio, you, you, you can tell, right. You feel like you get to know these guys a little bit. But when you really see, like, just how they interact with fans, with the media, with anyone they come across in the community, it's just such an easy team to root for um, that it, it, it's, like, doubly good when, when they play well. And I hope they can carry this on, man. Well, listen Massive to- one against Arkansas. Yeah. Listen to break here. We'll come back with some football thoughts, Billy. Um, and uh, I'm going to give you a shout at the break just to run something by you. So we'll, we'll get to you here in a moment. All right, that's Billy Lucci on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Right now, we're talking about the Association of Former Students. Do you know someone from A&M who's a graduate within the past 12 years, past 12 years, excuse me, and they're leading by example in business and in service? The Association of Former Students would like to invite you to nominate yourself or someone you know for the 12 under 12 Young Alumni Spotlight. So each year, the association recognizes a dozen Aggies who have graduated within the past 12 years for their business accomplishments, civic or military service, philanthropic efforts, and outstanding representation of Texas A&M's core values of excellence, integrity, leadership, loyalty, respect, and selfless service. Previous year honorees have included leaders in business, higher education, architects, petroleum engineers, nonprofit executives, physicians, veterans, and members of the U.S. Armed Forces. 2024 nominations close Sunday, March 31st, so be sure to submit a nomination very soon. To learn more about the recognition and submit a nomination, visit tx.ag slash 12 under 12 nominations.
Texas Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. We've got about three minutes left in the segment. Programming update. Billy's only going to join us uh, for this segment, but he'll join us for an hour tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, he's traveling back, obviously. So, and we'll have Jay Billis, who was on the call this weekend at 10:35. Billy, let's uh, let's uh, and we have Buzz coming up as well. Billy, let's close up here in the last three minutes of the segment with uh, some Aggie football David, and maybe David. yes, sir. Real quick. Arkansas, LSU, Missouri, this is a real opportunity for, the bat, for that basketball team. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. And, uh, and we'll also might have to talk about the random downtown Detroit bar that we stumbled into at about 1.30 last night in negative two-degree weather. You can imagine the, the theme that was in the crowd. Um, play, we'll, we'll need like a full like two-minute segment for that one, but go ahead. Well, just from a football perspective, um, you know, they, they get another one over the weekend and potentially some more in the works, right? Yeah, there's more in the works. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually starting an article. We'll see how long it takes. I'm writing on the way home from uh, on, the, on the way home from Detroit today, too. But it's kind of scatter shooting. There's so much. There's so much. There's actually so much to talk about, David. I'm assuming you're talking about the tight end commitment. Trey, Trey Watson. Watson. Yep. Um, yeah, and look, that you know, you look at the tight end position. Donovan Green's coming back. The one thing that they, they did not have returning is someone that said a dynamic in the passing game guy, 38 catches. You know what do you have? 300 something yards. There at Fresno, Washington's you know playing for a national title, and, and DeBoer thought enough of him that he's taken him there in that offense, which I think is even more important uh, with the way they throw the ball around. So they, I think they wanted a dynamic pass-catching weapon. I actually, you know, even before Jimbo was was out, one of his priorities in this portal was to go get kind of what he referred to me as a, a Jay Sternberger type of guy. Again, like someone that really could cause a problem uh, for linebackers with his speed and quickness. Um, and that's when, when you look at his tape, I think that's what you see. I think he'd be a terrific compliment um, to Donovan Green there at tight end. Billy, um, I got about a minute left in this one. So we, we did that. Um, any final thoughts here before we get you back here tomorrow? Well, I want to talk Elko tomorrow a lot and just kind of what, what they've done in the portal versus like what went out versus what came in. And also to stay tuned in terms of uh, – of the portal because they're obviously uh, not done. Bronny and Howell have, I think, everybody excited about 2025 and the start they're going to get there. But um, man, it's, it's been impressive to watch what they've done. And if you really put pen to paper and start breaking it down, they have improved this roster tremendously in a very short amount of time. Billy, we appreciate you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Talk to you. Billy Lucci on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. All right, that's going to do it for hour number two. As I mentioned, Buzz Williams is going to be joining us here in a few minutes. After Buzz, we got Jay Billis. That's right. Nick Savage and also Kay Bickham in the back. Way in the clutch, man. Way to get that one. We'll have Jay Billis. We'll chat with him. We'll talk with Buzz. We'll get to your text messages and much, much more. It's Texax Radio.
Welcome back into TechSags Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. We're here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. I think we got Buzz Williams at some point coming on this hour. I think in the next few minutes, hopefully. We'll see uh, how that plays out. Snowmageddon or Ice Mageddon. Well, we can't use the same terms. Dawson, help me come up with a better term. What are we calling now? Uh, Ice-a-thon. Ice Ice Baby? I, I, yeah, I like that. I like that. Pretty good. Are you familiar with that song? I, I am, actually. Who I, sings it? Well... Let me let me think about this. Yeah, well, I, I do know that that song is uh, uh, ancient. It's ancient, but it's also do you not wasn't it copyright? Ancient. Wasn't there a whole copyright lawsuit with that song as well? That sounds right. Yeah, Did they was, steal uh, like that a David from, Bowie song or something. Yeah, I, I thought that, that there was a whole controversy about that. I mean, my dad talks about it, but I what, what do, do I you, care? What, what do you think the song is called? What do I think the song? I mean, is the called? the artist is named. Uh, I have this, if it's called Ice Ice Baby. If it's called Ice Ice Baby, Jay Cooley. Or Jay, Pardon? J. Cool. Nope. I'm I'm lost. David, you're gonna have to help me here. Just why don't we use the name Ice and see if you can find it now? Ice. Hmm. Ice. Ice. Cube. Nope. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm lost, David. I, I'm lost. Nick, tell the person. Thank Pardon. You. Sorry. I'm grinding back oh, here, David. My bad. My bad. What, what oh, do you vanilla need ice. For? Thank you. Oh, you need. Let's go. Come thank on. you, vanilla ice. Gosh. Oh, yeah. All the all the heads are gonna be proud of me. So thank you. Thank you for that. Why don't we, as we're waiting for Buzz Williams to uh, to call the program, if we're going to get him, we'll see. Um, why don't we do around the SEC, shall we? Yeah, sure thing. I'll, I'll start, Mr. In the, Dawson. I'll, I'll start in the transfer portal. Uh, Aggie Corner, Tony Grimes, original A and M commit, committed to Mississippi State or sorry, Michigan State. Uh, he flipped to UNLV for Barry Odom over there, a former SEC coach. And then also as well as Isaiah Bond. Well, stop there about. on on the Tony Grimes one. That's that's sorry. an interesting one because I had. I had hoped we'd see him play last year, right? Yes. A&M really needed him. I find it interesting, and every case is different. When a guy commits to one place, why he would change a couple weeks later. Now, there are, there are reasons, right? Like, I understand Will Rogers. His reasoning, well, that's not the coach I signed up for, so I'm out, right? Um, and Michigan State, obviously, they're, they, they have a new direction as well. But I find that fascinating. Like, is it the path to play? Is it which should be for most folks, right? Like to to me, when you are considering to transfer, there's and I, I want you all to consider this like through your kids' perspectives, through your own perspective, through what makes the most football sense, right? So, if my kid is thinking about transferring, I'm going to ask him about the culture, about the city, about the relationships, about the you know, academic programs, and do they have your, your major there? Like, those are all questions. I mean, if you got a guy who's on the path to the NFL, it, it might be some different questions, right? But the path to play is certainly a big part of it. And, and potentially, who are you playing against? What kind of eyeballs are you getting? What are some other questions that you would be asking, Matthew? Well, like, who are the coaches there? Like, what kind of coaching changes are going on? Like, for example, Joe Rossi, who was the former defense coordinator at Minnesota, just got hired at Michigan State. So I guess he might have had a conversation with them. Didn't feel like he fit in that defense, possibly. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that to that question specifically. But it would be weird because Joe Ross is a really good defense coordinator. He did a really good job in Minnesota. Yeah, but sometimes it's not the right fit. I, we don't know if that was it. Or maybe exactly. he got a great relationship with the dude at UNLV. Or maybe NIL played a part. I, I, maybe they I, don't have a Chick-fil-A in East Lansing. You know, who knows? So I, could, I, could be a number of reasons. Is that a fact or are you just guessing? Nah, I'm just saying stuff. Like, like you know, like... I moved down here, and it was a problem because they don't have deep dish pizza down here. They lied to me, and people said, oh, yeah, we got, we got deep dish pizza down here. No, pan pizza is not deep dish pizza, right? That's not a, they're not the same thing. What is the right? difference? Well, deep dish pizza is like almost kind of like a casserole. It's, it's not very doughy. It's kind of like a crust. It's, like, it's very much like a pie pie crust, and it's, like really, it's probably about an inch thick. Whereas like pan pizza, kind of like fluffed up, and you know, it's a lot more doughy. You know? Whereas like in the deep dish pizza, like, the majority of it is like you have maybe a giant slab of sausage and just mounds of sauce. You know, the cheese isn't on top either for, I guess, most deep dish places. It's kind of like embedded in there. Do people from Chicago hate thin crust pizza? You know, I think people from Chicago are really proud of Chicago pizza. And like my thought is like you don't have to call it pizza. Like people are like, oh, New York style pizza is better. I'm like, they're very different. Like if you didn't call it pizza, I'd be totally okay. Call it whatever you want. It is amazing. So, but people are very proud of their pizza there. All right, so back to the topic at hand. When you are transferring, you know, there's a lot of questions that 
you should be asking. And again, the relationship with your position coach, your head coach, um, you know, quality of life, I think, should play a part in it. Um, what your professional life is going to look, what your professional life is going to look like, that is all part of the uh, equation as well. All right, let's do, let's do this. Let's uh, continue talking uh, some sports, but let's turn our attention back to some basketball. Buzz Williams is joining us now on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Buzz, good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Doing wonderful. Thanks for joining us. Billy is in Detroit hanging out there after the Lions' victory and Dan Campbell's victory. So it's just me this morning. Um, how gratifying was that win against Kentucky this week and considering all the things that this team this year, this particular season, has gone through? Yeah, I, I mean, um, we had been through a lot in the in just the week prior to playing Kentucky. And so I thought again, and there's been multiple cases of it throughout the season thus far, I thought the resilience of our players as people and the competitive character of who we were uh, was on display. And that was, as, as you know, if you were there, it was very much needed for it to even be a game there. They're as talented as any team in the country, coached by a Hall of Fame coach. And uh, we were we were under duress and stress from the beginning. So I, I thought that we were much better this Saturday than we were last Saturday. And that's encouraging. And hopefully we can carry that to Arkansas if we can get there. Buzz, we've talked many times on this show about your ability, your staff's ability to self-diagnose and fix issues that develop throughout a season. Is it fair to say that this past weekend was kind of what you had talked about heading to Auburn, more about you all doing what you do well at the highest of levels? Yes, sir. And I don't ever say any of that to be egotistical or arrogant. I was uh, There was a, uh, several recruits and families on campus uh, this weekend, and just to illustrate the point, uh, one of them is a really good player, and they're asking all of the typical questions, and um, the dad mentioned something that I thought had astute wisdom, and I said, you know, I think in truth, um, specific to Texas A&M, I don't know who's recruiting you or what's going on, you have to figure out if you're willing to receive how we go about things. Like, uh, you, you saw Kentucky, there's not one player on our team that they recruited or would take. Today, they wouldn't take them. And there's not one player on Kentucky's team that Texas A&M even sent a letter to because they're not coming here. And so I think that it is uh, a competitive advantage to some degree that our players – Last year, when we were six and five, uh, this year, when we were zero and one and laid an egg against LSU, we've been willing. They have been willing to receive coaching. Uh, coaching is probably an overused word. They've been willing to receive the truth specific to them individually, and the truth specific to us collectively. And I, I say that in regards to our staff, too. Uh, sometimes it's harder for the old adults to handle the truth than it is the young adults, and I would be at the front of the line. And so I think we're all very transparent with one another, um, and I think over time that has helped us morph and evolve into figuring out how we can improve and what gives us our best chance. Talking to Buzz Williams here on Tech Radio. Buzz, follow me on this because – I- I feel like obviously your team needs boots uh, and Wade um, to to do big things, but I almost feel like they need each other as well. Like obviously there's a teammate component to it, but when boots gets going, it allows Wade to get going and vice versa. Uh, for sure, you know, like you want to you want as many players on the floor that are hard to guard as possible, uh, regardless of position per se, and um, when you have less of them more attention is on them. And so uh, those guys work in concert with one another in many respects, almost subliminally, almost subconsciously. Uh, obviously, they're, they're roommates and have been and are very, very close off the floor. But there's a symmetry and a connection 
within how they play on the floor. And I, I think um, sometimes Andy, uh, Solo, Henry, uh, even H, like they they play off of that too. I think Jace is starting to figure that out. Uh, I think Wildens is starting to figure that out. Because of how we play, um, it's it's different than uh, how Kentucky plays. And so that, that connection, so to say, um, that impacts boots and four for sure, 1,000%. But it also, it impacts the others. Um, and I think that, that was that was visible on Saturday for sure. To stay along that track, I look at Solo, and sometimes the stats don't jump out at you, but his impact certainly does. That block in the game, the the, the one that's all over the highlights on, on social media and on Sports Center, yeah. that just yeah. felt like everybody felt that 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 block, like all the players got into it. Yeah, uh, he he um he impacts the game in ways that are much bigger than the things sometimes that appear in the box score. I thought he was the best defender in the game on either side of the ball. And we were, the first eight minutes of the second half, we were really struggling on the glass. Number four had eight offensive rebounds in the game. And that was, that was what changed the tide was they were doing it, uh, a really good job on the offensive glass. We subbed Solo in, not for him to guard number four, because Solo can guard any of those guys, but the presence that he had on the glass when we went big, I know it's, we call it our big lineup. It's still not big. It's just big to us. Uh, so we use the words to try to hype our guys up into thinking that we are big, but those, uh, that that was big. And, and Solo's, you can quantify what he does statistically in the box score defensively, but man, he was, we were glad to have him back. Uh, another strong athlete, another guy with length, another guy with size, another guy that can impact the ball when the ball is in the air. Um, and I thought he, he was, I'm not saying he was the best player but he was one of the best players in regards to impacting the game. Talking to Buzz Williams here on Texas Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, another one of those guys, and you already mentioned him a, a bit ago, is Wilden's Levesque. Just that that presence in the paint, his ability to alter shots, his physicality certainly came through huge in that game, sir. Yeah, like, you know, I, I mentioned it to our guys in the locker room, and four and Boots would be the first to say it, too. So I'm not trying to take the shine away from them, but um, if those guys scored 60 points, uh, we, we should give 17 to 20 of them to Wildens. Um, because he was literally just clearing the lane for Boots and Ford to shoot layups. Yes, they got to get past their defender, but at this level of ball, a, a lot of defense is predicated on the secondary defender. And Wildens just takes the secondary defender out of the play. And we never throwing the ball. Hey, Wildens, here's the deal. If you're going to touch it, you got to get it when we miss it. And he did a lot of that, too. Uh, I, think he had, I think he had five, uh, including the ones when uh, at Texas A&M will play with the net messed up because that's, I guess, a new rule. But, man, I thought, I thought Wildens, his, just like you said, uh, his physicality, him just banging around. It, it's like bumper cars in there with him. He's a below-the-rim athlete, but his care factor um, is is really high, and he's a really good human being who it's taken some time to kind of figure out some of the unique ways we operate, and he has uh, accepted them all, and I, I, I'm hoping that this gives him a little traction as we enter the next 15 games. Buzz, it's been said that your teams play at their best at times with their back against the wall, but I don't know if it's that. I, I, I mean, would you agree with me? I think it's just when everybody's playing Texas A&M basketball, these are, what, these, are, these are the things we can see happen. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. You know, I quit looking at social media, and I've tried to restrict my heart and brain from hearing all the stuff. I think sometimes all of the things that swirl around make it really hard to lead. And when you're trying to lead young men who uh, the world they're living in is different than the world that you and I lived in, I I think this, I think that we kind of operate how we arrived at Texas A&M, what's transpired during our time at Texas A&M. We're all kind of uh, similar fabric, similar cloth in regards to having an edge to prove that we belong. Uh, Whether pick somebody on the staff, you would say that. Uh, you would for sure say that if you look at my resume. Um, Manny's for sure the highest ranked player. Um, who's Wildens? Who's Andy? Who's Solo? Uh, Four was recruited a little bit here and there. Uh, Boots was a academic red shirt at Virginia Tech. Like it's just a Henry average point one and point nine at Duke. Like the collection of us. Let's let's just prove if where you belong, and let's try really hard. And we are at our best when we play like that. Uh, when our back is against the wall, in many respects, that's kind of how we've got to this point: is overcoming whatever the opinions were and the evaluations were to have this chance. So however you frame that and what are the semantics that go with it? I'm not sure, but I I think we're all very similar in that regard. And I think we kind of speak the same language, which is why to your earlier question, I agree. Like you have to be willing to receive how we operate. And normally the people that have a chip on their shoulder, a lot of those people, not just in basketball and life, they, they, they speak the same language and kind of work on the same frequency. Buzz, about a year ago, I think it was a year ago, um, you had to land in Oklahoma on your way to Fayetteville. Really tough weather right now again. What What is the travel situation for you all? Yeah, I think if, it start, if the school starts with an A, it's a sign that we're going to have travel difficulties. We played at Auburn last Tuesday, and I found out as I went to meet with media that our plane broke. Uh, once it landed, in College Station. So we took three prop planes or took three different planes uh, to Auburn last Monday and then found out Tuesday night after, as I was going to media Tuesday night after the loss, that the plane that was supposed to pick us up couldn't pick us up. So we spent the night in Auburn and didn't get home until Wednesday evening last week. Obviously, the all the things that are going on with the weather we've been staying on top of on top of over the last few days. Um, I don't know. Uh, we've altered the schedule twice so far today. Um, we're about to go right now. As soon as I hang up with you, we're going to start our work and see if we can drive to Austin. Uh, if we can get there, there's some uh, problems on the road to Austin and then we got to see if we can get in the plane, and then if we can get in the plane, can we land in Fayetteville? Uh, last year, we landed in Wichita, Kansas, sat for two hours, waited on buses that were unplanned to come pick us up to drive us to Tulsa, got to Tulsa at midnight because it was the only hotel that we could find that could house us, spent the night in Tulsa for six hours, had uh, bagels that morning, and then drove to Fayetteville and slept for two hours and then played the game. So we we call it a safari. So hopefully we're not on a safari, but we could be. But um, hopefully hopefully we can get to Fayetteville sometime tonight. Safe travels, my friend. Thanks so much. We'll we'll be watching and rooting for you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Buzz Williams there on the uh, Brian on the Law Hotline. Appreciate his time here on the program. We're going to hit a break. When we do come back here on Tex Ags Radio, open segment followed by Jay Billis to close out the show. Randy, I see your question. I will work in that question, my friend. 
Uh, he wants to know where Jay Billis would rank uh, the A&M backcourt. So we'll talk with uh, Jay Billis about that. Right now, though, Costa Vida time. All right, so four-year anniversary for them. Congratulations to Holly and the crew over there. They're going to have a ribbon cutting because they weren't able to do it back in 2020 um, because obviously the you know you couldn't have big gatherings together. So with New Year resolutions out there and people trying to get to some healthy eating out there, they want to let you know that you can go to Costa Vida and get your healthy eating on. They've got fresh ingredients made from scratch, a scratch menu, and the ability to customize for most dietary needs. And everyone is invited to join Costa Vida in South College Station, Friday, January 19th, 11.30 a.m. to 12. They're going to have chips and queso and some lunch specials to offer. The entire Texas community has shown up for such uh, big events in many, many ways. So get some chips and queso, whatever else you want. You want some quesadillas? It is the place to go to get your fresh mechs on. That's right. I said it, fresh mechs, because it is fresh, and it is Mexican food done the right way. It is in South College Station. You can find them at Reed Arena as well for the women's and men's basketball games. They are Aggie-owned and operated, 4501 Mills Park Circle in College Station. Again, that is 4501 Mills Park Circle in South College Station. Go say hi to Holly there at Costa Vida in South College Station. Texas Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. Final hour of the program. We're going to have Jay Billis on in about 10 minutes. Um, pumped to get him on the show. He's, um, oh, good. A Longhorn's watching and said, hook him. Huh. That's original. I didn't think that would happen. Anyway, 
Uh, so we're going to have Jay Bellis on the program, chit-chat with him. He was at Reed Arena. He was on the call. Love to get his thought. It was interesting. Some people, Somebody sent in a text. They didn't like Tom Hart's, and I think they thought I agreed with Tom. I just I don't feel the need to fight my friends over sports talks. Uh, that being said, I completely disagree. The boots play, he barely put his foot out. Like, and like, you're, we're not robots, guys. When you jump in the air to take a jump shot, right? Like, you don't always put your foot down the exact same spot, right? Huh? You don't jump up and down in the same spot. There's a little bit of movement. I didn't see anything egregious in that. I've seen guys do the egregious thing. Who's the NBA player, Matthew, who always gets in trouble for that? I know James Harden's gotten in trouble for it. Who else? For getting in trouble for what? Thanks for paying attention. Just You're kidding. Uh, when you shoot a three and your leg kicks out. There's people who get in trouble all the time for that. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you, like you said, James Harden's like the number one culprit for that. I mean, I... I don't know how I feel about that rule because it's so it's so objective, you know. And there's some some tough shots that you got to take that kind of require your legs to kick out a little bit. But I guess that's my my point here, and I, you know, is the fact that um, what we saw from Boots was not that right. It looked like a natural leg out, right? Like totally natural. That you don't make that call then. Come on, guys. Like if you make that call, it better be able to be reviewed. Obviously not. It's a stupid call, and it could have cost Texas A&M the game. The, the call with Wade, was that at the end of regulation? I'm trying to get these calls right, where he barely touches the dude's hip. Like, that's, don't call that. Like, that was stupid. Yeah, both of those were, were crazy. Crazy. And there was another, another, like, ghost foul on, like, Solomon Washington, like, earlier in that, that game. Like, earlier, like, like, five minutes earlier, that was like, I was like, what? Like, if there was, I guess there probably was a foul, but, like, Certainly wasn't on him, you know. It was like I think that was like his fourth foul or something. And like you're like, that's our guy that's getting after it right now. Let's let's keep him safe, you know. Like and they're they were coming after us. They were coming after us. Hey, a Longhorn fan on the YouTube page. He's actually being polite. He's asking what I think the score of the uh, game next Thanksgiving is going to be. Forty five ten a and i I'll, I'll say forty nine ten. You know what? Fifty five ten. Fifty six ten. Fifty seven twelve. I like that. I like that. I'm good with that. 57-12. I'm I, good with that. I don't know what the score is going to be. Nobody does. All right, continue on. Uh, well, you want to talk about SEC more transfer portal? News? Yeah, let's get let's get let's get there because the, we did already hit a little bit on the Longhorns. They did pick up a big one. Um, they're not the only ones. There's a bunch of other stuff going on. Yeah, Clay Millen, Colorado State quarterback, former Colorado State quarterback. Uh, he kind of got beat out by Braden Fowler, but he's just a true sophomore. He started as a true freshman last year. He was, he was as good as it gets, you know. Uh, as you know. You're, you're going to get Jay Norvell over there for Colorado State. Comes to Florida. He's going to be competing with Graham Mertz right off the bat. And, you know, of course, DJ Lagway, five-star quarterback, that's going to be coming there as well. So, interesting landing spot. For it him. is an interesting landing spot. You're right. It's just a lot, a lot of competition, a lot of, a lot of work in that room. You know, I feel like there's, there were some other spots they maybe could have gone. But uh, he, he's an okay player, I think. Braden Fowler, though, was spectacular for Colorado State. So, I understand wanting to get out of that situation. Ole Miss lands another transfer in the portal. South Alabama cornerback, Yam Banks, uh, all-time name team, Yam Banks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like a double, like, basketball. Like, that would be, like, a cool basketball name, you know, like, Yam Banks. Like, that is too. That's I don't know, but uh, he's a corner. He's pretty good. Uh, then let's get to C.J. Daniels, four-star transfer from Liberty, <laughs> wide receiver, going to LSU. He's going to go there with Xavier Thomas, who's a Mississippi State wide receiver going over there. They'll look to pair to try and attempt <laughs> to replace the production that Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas had over there. It's going to be going to be pretty difficult to do, if you ask me. That is Matthew Dawson there at the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. I want to read this last one. Alamo Aggie, my thought on the leg kick out is, if it's natural, it's not a foul on the defender for making the contact. But if it does have to be an offensive foul, just let it go. The, the Boots one in particular, I've watched a couple different angles of it. I, I didn't see it. And, and by the way, the Henry Coleman goaltending, when I first saw it, I was like, yeah, that might be goaltending. And then when I watched it again, I was like, no, it's coming out. It's coming out of the cylinder. Did you see it the same way? I I, the same do way. I have baggy goggles on that particular play? Well, and then the, the Kentucky defender touched it, yeah. too, after it. So I'm like, oh, gosh. I'm like, here we well, go. Well, then like, it should be goaltend for us. Exactly. I was like, oh, I was, I was heated. I was heated. All right, let's do this. Let's hit a break. Jay Bell is going to be joining us here on in a few minutes, and he'll be joining us on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. So we're going to talk about Brian Foley uh, and talk about that criminal criminal defense and DWI lawyer that he is. He's the best out there, guys. He's a tech sagger. He's a subscriber, a listener, a friend of the show. Brian Foley Law, 
um, does it all. 7% of all attorneys in Texas are qualified to be a board-certified lawyer, and uh, Brian Foley is one of those, right? A uh, criminal defense and DWI attorney. And if we make mistakes out there, you want somebody who's going to be able to defend you and understand everything about it. You've got kids to go to Northgate with fake IDs. Police potentially arrest them, charge you with a Class A misdemeanor in county court, which is a crime that can stay on your record forever instead of that Class C speeding ticket for failure to uh, signal as well. And what you want is a guy who understands it from inside, right? And that is why uh, he's the guy for you. He's a former chief prosecutor that knows the system from inside and out. And remember, good people can have a bad day. But the next day, start by calling a criminal defense lawyer and DWI lawyer in Brian Foley. Uh, Brian Foley Law covers Houston, the Woodlands, Conroe, and as well as Brian College Station. His his phone number, excuse me, 936-596-0407. 936-596-0407 or visit the website brianfoleylaw.com that is brianfoleylaw.com All right, let's continue it on here on Tex Ags Radio. Super excited about our next guest. Jay Billis was on the call this weekend as AM did beat Kentucky in overtime. Let's go to the Brian Foley Law Hotline. We are joined by Jay Billis. Jay, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. How you doing? Doing wonderful. Hey, I appreciate you making time to be on the program and a uh, big fan of your work. So let's just start things off with uh, the atmosphere there at Reed. What did you think about it? It was great, especially considering the students weren't coming back until tomorrow, I guess. Uh, it looked like some of them came back, but it was a fantastic episode. What was different 
in your eyes, you've, you've probably seen a couple of A&M games as you were prepping for this one. To, in the, the way the team approached Kentucky as opposed to some of the other games that they had this year? I don't know that the approach was any different. I mean, I'm not in every one of their practices, but their preparation was, was excellent. And, uh, but, I, but it is for every game. Uh, Buzz Williams and his staff, they do as good a job as anybody of, of preparing a team and putting a game plan together. And it's one thing to put a good game plan together. It's another thing to communicate it and implement it the right way. And I think Texas A&M does a great job of that. Uh, but, you know, they certainly got off to a good start shooting the ball. For a team that doesn't consistently shoot the ball well, uh, that was a nice bonus. But, you know, those things kind of course correct over the course of a game. And I, don't, I, I think uh, A&M's numbers... You know, they shot it better from three overall than they normally do. They're probably a 30% three-point shooting team. They shot close to 40 in that game. Uh, but but they were engaged from the beginning. Uh, they got great contributions, I think, from everybody. Uh, Solomon Washington was fantastic when he came into the game. Anderson Garcia was terrific. Uh, you know, Jace Carter came in the game and gave them really good minutes. Uh, so there was, it wasn't just, I mean, I think people look at the box score or something, and they might think that Tyrese Radford, Wade Taylor were, you know, of course they combined for, what, 60 points or whatever it was. You know, that's the headline. But the most important thing were the contributions of, of some of the others. Uh, you know, Garcia, if I remember right, had like four or five steals. And, you know, the offensive rebounds, they, they, they did a great job offensive rebounding. That ultimately won them the game by getting like three straight possessions. They, held the, they had the ball for over a minute with under two minutes to go because they got uh, extra possessions off the offensive glass. So, and they didn't turn it over, um, you know, against the team. It's, and it's not like Kentucky's a, a big turnover forcing team, but uh, uh, you know, A&M coughed it up 19 or 20 times against Auburn. And when you don't shoot it well, you're not going to overcome that kind of thing. And, and so they, they took care of the ball. They pursued the ball and they made unbelievably gutsy plays when the game was on the line. Talking about Jay Bills here on Tech Sags Radio. Jay, one of the things that I think that A&M has really struggled with that it seemed to come together was having Wade Taylor and Boots Radford in the same game contribute the way they did, and it really started with Boots going downhill attacking the rim. Yeah, well, that's who he is. So, you know, he's a left-handed driver, and uh, and he can make shots, but he's not a not a great shooter. But for him to you know, shoot the percentage he did. I think he was 50% across the board, except for the foul line. I mean, you know, he's a good free throw shooter. and He was missing missing free throws until, you know, those big two at the end. You know, when they had to have him, he made them. I mean, he's got guts. Uh, but, yeah, he and he hasn't been, you know, he's been in and out of the lineup with injury and all that stuff. Uh, but that looked like the old, you know, sort of the vintage, you know, Tyrese Radford. And, you know, that's a, that's a, a backcourt that complements each other really well because Taylor's a, uh, He's a bucket getter, and he's not the most efficient shooter. Uh, he's not going to shoot a great percentage every game, but man, when he gets hot, you know you can ride that ride that wave all the way into the shore. And and Radford's a really nice complement to that because he's so tough and such a great rebounding guard. And he just finds his what you know he finds his way to the basket, and then he seeks out bodies and gets to the foul line. Um, that you know that was an impressive performance. It, it's not one of those things I think you're going to see every game. Because that's uh, that's asking a lot, but uh, but the fact that I think it it shows a lot, and that's why a lot of us you know rank Texas A and M in the top twenty to start the year. They're capable of doing that, but bad shooting nights, things like that. Um, you know, you're going to have some some results you won't care for in, in those nights. Well, what does it do for them too? Considering they had these high expectations, we all did. They take a couple steps back, but yet it sh- they show this is the kind of team they can be on the right night. Yeah, that's sort of the thing when you look at statistics and analytics, which I'm a believer in. Uh, you know, you, you, we measure everything in our society, and we should. There's nothing wrong with that. But analytics tell you what you've done. It doesn't necessarily tell you what you're capable of doing. And I think, you know, you look at the body of work that Texas A&M has put together to this point, and, uh, and it, it, there's been some really good things. There's been some things that haven't been as, as good. And, uh, but I think what that game shows you is what they're capable of. And, uh, so I think Texas A&M is capable of beating just about anybody. Um, are they one of the five or 10 best teams in the country? I wouldn't say that, but they're capable of beating the five or 10 best teams in the country and building toward the end. I mean, people tend to forget, but this time, about this time last year, 
you know, we thought Connecticut as first nine, 10 games of the season, the best team in the country. And they lost six out of eight when they started conference play. And, and we're like, what's going on? You know, uh, UConn is faltering. UConn's not as good as we thought. And they wind up winning the national championship. It's a, it's a build up to the end. And, uh, this is basketball. I mean, you look at any, any, uh, level of basketball teams can lose games. That doesn't mean you're not capable. And, uh, and this is about being, this, this sport is about being at your best at the end of the year. You know, every game's important and all that stuff, but you know, I don't know any, anybody in any profession that's at their best all the time. It's how you perform when you're not at your best. Uh, I love your thoughts on this. We, we have seen over the years, the reason there wasn't a panic button pushed after the first couple of conference losses was Buzz Williams teams typically figure it out and they reach their highest potential, whatever that may be. What is it about a Buzz Williams team that typically figures it out and gets to that level? Well, I don't think it's just a Buzz Williams team. I mean, I I, I under you know, I get what you're saying. I, I don't. I've never understood what panic button means. Like, you know, when is it the right time to panic? Panic doesn't help anything. Um, you know, at the end of every game, you assess it. You can be excited or disappointed for a short period of time. Then you assess it and you uh, look to where you can uh, do better, and you get back to work to do better the next game and and make those things happen. Um, and you know, a habit is what you revert to under stress. You know, there, there, there's nobody that, that rises to an occasion that, that doesn't exist. Um, as far as you're going to do something in a game that, that you're not capable of at other times, uh, that, that doesn't exist. Uh, what you do is you, is when you're under stress, that's when you revert to your habits. That's when your habits show. And they're a team, I think that has generally has really good habits. And, uh, and they, they drill it, they work on it. That's part of who they are. And I, I thought, uh, now making shots is one thing. Like I'm not, I'm not going to the making shots part. They made, they made some really good, really difficult shots throughout the course of the game at Kentucky. But I think the way that they played and the way they went about playing, uh, was more of who Texas A&M is versus some of the, the games they've had prior where I thought they were at times a little bit out of character. Like LSU was totally out of character. I thought some of what, what I watched on tape, I didn't see the Auburn game live, but I watched it on tape on Synergy, and that didn't look like the Texas A&M team that I, I had expected. Uh, that was more on Saturday against Kentucky what I expected, and that's not the make-or-miss part. Uh, that's different. You know, um, uh, you can take a really good shot and miss it. it, it that's not a big deal. Um, but the way they, the way they defended, the way they responded in key situations, uh, it, it was impressive. And it's what it's who I think that team is. Jay, you mentioned UConn earlier in the tough stretch that they had. They were the only team in the top six that didn't lose this weekend. What happened this weekend in college basketball? I don't know. Like I, I think sometimes we tend to overreact to certain things. Um, we're going to have like, this is a year and, and I think that it's becoming more the norm where, you know, talent is more spread around now. Part of it's because of the transfer portal. Uh, you know, you got some of these outstanding mid-major players that are transferring up. And then you've seen a number of players who were, you know, quote, quote, average major conference players that have transferred down. And now they're, they're busting out and, you know, able to show, you know, who they are away from a role. and so the talent is spread out now, and uh, and you know some people use the term parity, but you're more capable on a given night to get beat, and uh, that doesn't mean you know that, that Purdue and Arizona and all these teams aren't the best teams, but especially on the road this year, uh, they're a little more vulnerable game to game it seems, but you know you take this this particular stretch, you know we've had a week or so when it seems like. It, it, we get caught up a lot in the ranked versus unranked thing. So, oh my God, all these top 10 teams lost to, to unranked teams. Well, the unranked doesn't mean you suck. You know, you might be the 27th or 28th best team in the country. That You're still capable. And uh, that's one thing I think we, we tend to lose at times, uh, that, that perspective. Jay, let's close out with this. After a couple of years of NIL and transfer portal and college basketball really taking advantage of it, do you like the direction it's going? Or are you like a lot of us? They're like, eventually these guardrails are coming, obviously with your, your lawyer background. How do you see this unfolding, and is it good? Well, one, it's great uh, because we've had an unfair 
system to the point of being immoral for over 100 years now, where athletes were restricted when nobody else in this multi-billion dollar industry was restricted, and including their fellow students. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's been an absurd thing, and we're not even to the point of, of it being fair. It's just one step closer to being fair. And I know that some of the old school coaches don't like it because they say, what are the rules? And I would ask, well, what are the rules with regard to your salary or your staff or the rest of, you know, the rest of, of the world? Uh, you know, why do we have to have rules with regard to athletes, but there are no rules with anyone else and it works just fine. Um, I think it's, I, I, I get it that coaches don't like that players can transfer. Um, I think a lot of old school guys enjoyed saying my way of the highway when there was no highway. You know, now you say my way of the highway, there's a highway and the players can leave, and I think that's perfectly appropriate uh, and not a problem. The coaches get to, you know, they, they talk about players opting out of bowl games. So what about all the coaches that opted out? You know, they left for other jobs and left their teams playing without them, and nobody seems to have a problem with that. Um, I don't have a problem with any of this stuff. What I, where I think it's headed, though, is at some point in the very near future, we're going to be signing players to contracts, and that's going to be cleaner and easier. And, and it'll make better financial sense. Everybody will know what the market is. And if you sign a player to, the, to a contract, just like you sign a coach to a contract, you have a buyout in it. And so if the player leaves, they owe you a buyout. I mean, it's perfect. It's so simple, but the NCAA doesn't want to do it. And if they really want to make this uh, an enterprise that makes sense, then reduce the size of Division I basketball to 150 schools, 120, whatever you want it to be. And that way, you will have every good player will want to play on that level. And you will have more talent spread out over fewer units. With roster sizes, there will be fewer places to transfer. So that'll, that'll take, you know, the contracts plus that will take care of uh, part of the transfer issue that people seem so upset about. Uh, and it, and it'll it'll be a much cleaner and easier enterprise. And that way, if you had 120, and I know there there are conference contracts that that will be difficult to deal with, but what they should do is just strictly revenue share. So that one division that everybody makes money, they all put it in a pot and they dole it out equally, and we'll see who spends it better. And, and that that way, you have uh, cost certainty. You know, everybody knows what they're going to get. All that stuff. And we'll see who's more efficient and who makes the best decisions, just like you would the NBA or the NFL, which is exactly what college football and college basketball are It's and have been for decades. It's the NFL and the NBA where the players go to class. That's the only difference. Jay, great stuff, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope to do it again. Thank you. Take care. Jay Bill is there on the Brian Jay Law Hotline. All right, listen to break here. We'll get some closing thoughts and also bring back an old friend of the program. You'll hear about that when we come back. Right now we're talking uh, Ascend, concrete lifting and support. Don't replace it, guys. Just lift it. All you got to do is lift it. 979-933-8527. They are Aggie owned and operated. They're a concrete lifting and support company providing an easy, clean service at half the price of replacement. So if you guys have a driveway or, you know, a patio that's got, a, you know, a bunch of raised concrete and it's like an eyesore, you trip over it, you have some younger kids that have tripped on it, or it's just it's just not good, right? You thought about maybe replacing it and you want to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. All right, guys, you want to do that. How about you do it for half that and just all you got to do is raise it. And that's what they do there at Ascend Concrete Lifting and Support. Uh, they want to educate you about the lifting process, the materials that they'll use. They'll show you how uh, they get it all done. And by the way, it is quick, guys. I'm talking super, super quick. Brian Dickerson's been doing it for a long time. Aggie owned and operated out there. They provide an honest opinion regarding your residence, your lake house, or any home or dwelling, front porches, back porches, steps, garage approach, stampede concrete, stamp concrete, driveways, pool decks, patios, you name it, they do it. Commercial, they'll do it for factory floors, apartment complexes, warehouses, industrial roads, streets, highways, all of it at a fraction of the cost of replacement. Get some free estimate right now and call them up. 979-933-8527. Follow them on Facebook, Ascend Lift, or on Instagram. Remember, don't replace it. Just lift it.
Text Ags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. A lot less time than I thought we'd have here in this uh, segment. So I said we're going to have an old friend. That friend is Double Daves. Remember this, guys? It's time to end the day with Double Daves. Caller number 12. 979-693-1150. We're going to hook you up with your choice of a dozen pepperoni rolls or one large topping pizza from Double Dave's. They've been serving Aggieland since 1984. Double Dave's Pizza serving up your favorite pizza and world-famous pepperoni rolls with reliable in-house delivery, bringing piping hot goodness straight to your door. Just click DoubleDave's.com and your favorites are on their way. All right, let's do this. Let's do one final little question. Well, I'll see if I can give it a good answer. We go back to the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. Matthew Dawson's doing a great job. His first official week, and has it been a full week yet? Tomorrow? Well, yeah, it'll be it'll be full week pretty much. Right, yeah, you've done great, buddy. Good job. Well, I appreciate it. Well, Caden the back asks, what player does Aggie basketball need the most besides Boots and Wade? What player beyond Boots and Wade does Aggie basketball need the most? So I'm going to answer this differently. Obviously, they need everybody, right? You need Solo to be out on the floor healthy doing what Solo does. I think Wilden's Levesque, you know what you're going to get from him, although the Kentucky game was a different level. When the matchups are there, he's a guy that you obviously need. The name I'm going to say that they need, okay, is not a name you're thinking. Who do you think I'm going to say, Matthew? Are you going to say Hayden Hefner? Nope. Are Although, say, I, I mean, I, I w- we want the occasional Hayden Hefner awesome game, yeah. Are you going to say Anderson Garcia? I expect Anderson Garcia to do what Anderson Garcia does all the time. So, no, he's not who I'm going to say. Interesting. Wow. All right. Well, who, who do you want to say? Manny Obasiki. Wow. And here's my why. When he's good, he's really, really good. And he's been a guy who's not been as consistent as some of the other names I've mentioned. I think you know what you're going to get from Anderson Garcia. Tough rebound stuff. And, and there are certain games where Manny's out there throwing it down and making some plays. I think more Manny at a higher level can only help this team in the biggest. Look, I expect Henry Coleman to have his big games. I expect for Boots and for Wade, right? Um, but we can get some for Manny to go along with the defense and the athleticism that Solo brings. Uh, I, I think Manny can be that guy. That's my answer. Do you hate it? I don't hate it at all. All right. I don't hate it at all. Good stuff, buddy. Thank you very much. All right, so tomorrow on the program. What do we got tomorrow on the program? We got Ty Warren coming on the program. We're working on some other things as well. Justin Lanham will be on here. Joni Taylor will be on the program. Shereen Williams will be on the program. My thanks to all of our great guests today. Jay Billis. And no, we didn't pay to get Jay. He just came on. That's our guy, our new guy. Buzz Williams joined the program. He was phenomenal. Tom Hart, Billy Lucci, and, of course, Olin Buchanan. All right, that's going to do it for Tech Sacks Radio on a frigid Monday. We'll see you all manana. Stay safe out there.